It being 6.06 on Monday, March 19th, may I have a motion to call the meeting to order? So, so moved. Second. Second by Ms. Canfield. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, before we get to the public markets, I'd like to welcome Representative James Cantwell to come forward. Sure. And then I think you to share just want to thank you, and I, if it's okay, I wanted to bring up uh, Joan Moschino just to, to be part of our, our funding. Okay. For Joan, a chair. Yeah. 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 I'm already taking care of That's exactly it. It's deeper. <laughs> but I want to just take the opportunity to say thank you and, and come before the board but just to, to express my, my personal gratitude for your friendship, for all the tremendous work that you've done for all these different years together. Tomorrow, I knew when I first met back when we were running things to do override school of education. And then, I didn't mind uh, going back so uh, with all of you just uh, experiences over many decades. But I was writing down, you can literally see I was writing as I was driving, I shouldn't say, but yeah, just putting down. Some, yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> but, but just for folks to know, the, uh, the work and the dedication that you all bring, it's been such an honor to work with each and every one of you. Uh, just in the most recent year, Joe and I were talking about, in just a recent time, we had uh, $21 million projects that we're doing for new types uh, in dealing with, and in, in red, people get frustrated because there's a, a long-term project that you're doing to take care of water types. Uh, the new EOC that we're in, beautiful building that's here, that, that talks about how we bring together all the police, fire, all the folks responding respond to area emergency. New library, the new, new library camera, how we work. Uh, the, uh, the new Gates School, that's how Michael was talking about it, came in. Uh, and then all the work you're doing for infrastructure, I have to say, for having anti dirty has made a huge difference. We should know that there's a reason why Governor Baker comes here to situate when we want to go, or the Senator Markey, the new boss, coming to, to learn the constituents that's the mark about how to prepare uh, for the triple threat. Because we know we have rising sea levels, we know we're having more frequent and intense storms, and we know we've overcome the infrastructure. So the, the fact that you've been able to show how to respond to each of these uh, storms, uh, Chief Murphy, uh, with Chief Stewart, or Jim Woodrow, with whom I used to work with at the State House, and I just joked that now that he's come in, I'm ready to leave. Don't say stuff that But the, the tremendous honor that, that you've given me, I just want, want folks to know that, that, that your voice through this board and the tremendous work that we've all been able to do as partners, I'm thrilled to we'll talk in a moment just about Joan and the partnership with that. But just working together on a local level, you've given me the opportunity. We worked early on for the new Maritime Center, which has been a wonderful resource. And there's some minor state funding just for dredging. A lot of it was volunteer. Uh, you know, we actually have kids from South Shore Tech who built it. And I uh, you know uh, Jimmy Gilmore really had a lot of uh, that. But that was a great community project. Uh, Roses Lane, folks who were here when I first came in, Roses Lane have been trying forever to try to get sewer service. And that was one of those uh, our things that we were able to help on uh, being a green community here. The Gates School funding, the library funding, you and I work together. On the state level, one of the things I'm always going to be proud of is, is getting your feedback on the dam and seawall funding. Um, because we've used our two little towns, uh, we, we've allocated now some $35 million have gone out, and our two little towns together have had about $18 million of that. Uh, out of the 75 communities, we get the lion's share of it, which we should, because we, we do hard work. Um, we talked early on about the need for a seafood commission. Uh, Gigi Malarkey is over my shoulder, and someone who's the brains behind everything that I do, uh, but just a way to help our fishermen. Situate and Marshall fishermen combined, we have the fourth most productive fishing ports in the state. It's a huge part of our economy, and to make sure that we find every way we can, as you all did, to make sure that we renovated the, the, uh, the fishing gate, commercial there, to make sure that that important part of our economy can thrive. Uh, because of your support, uh, Anne Marie Galvin, what a wonderful pick that you had years ago to run Situate Facts. You should know that at a state level, she is a person that we go to often to talk about ways that we can make an impact statewide. And because of her efforts, working with Ben Thomas in my office, we started a statewide commission that's been proving that we spend 97% of our money we're spending dealing with substance misuse is spent downstream after someone's already become addicted. So it could be our tremendous fire and police who go in Narcan, people who bring them back to life. Money spent at the hospital to bring them back, recovery coaches to go with them, long-term treatment, long-term recovery, sometimes jail. Uh, we've been spending precious little of those funds up until recently on uh, trying to do prevention. Uh, it's something that Pat O'Connor and I and Joe Moschino were working very, very closely on uh, to try to do this promote from that commission. Final other quick points federally. The thing I'm always going to remember, Sean, uh, because I know it's yourself, Tony, John, all of us, uh, just a little bit before your tenure, but flood insurance. 
Uh, if people want an example of how you make a difference, uh, at, uh, when people say you can't change uh, City Hall or you can't change Congress, our two little towns, uh, when the federal government came up with uh, federal private <coughs> insurance changes that would have dramatically changed in our towns, people, you know, the Sullivan's out near White House Road had one bill for $68,000 for flood insurance, and because we pounded the ground, we brought our federal officials uh, here, we were able to really uh, demonstrate why that would make a change. We really helped to change federal law, and it's one of the things I will always be proud of that was led by this board. Um, other issues, um, the most recent ones uh, are international. Uh, because of the opportunity you've given me, uh, <coughs> was able to go to an international conference talking about global warming. They invited me, frankly, because they said, we know that your towns lead when it comes to uh, coastal meditation. What can we talk to our doctors about? So I want to thank you personally for your friendship and your support. I want to thank the voters of Situate for entrusting me to be your representative for nine and a half years now. And I'm thrilled that people hadn't seen it in, in the papers. I'm thrilled to be able to share that, that our, I will not be going too far because I'm now working for uh, Senator Markey as his state uh, director. So we'll still be working on all those same issues, uh, dealing with FEMA, the Army Corps, uh, the VA, and just so people don't worry that all the hard work that we have, the best partners, because uh, all the work that we do in the legislature, uh, Joan, is gonna, Joan, uh, Joan and I both have been dealing as a team representing Situate. Uh, Gigi Moraghi, I mentioned, who served uh, for Frank Hines as the Chief of Staff for Frank. She's gonna make sure that nothing changes. And when you call our office, 617-722-2396, that Gigi will be, uh, I'm signing her for all kinds of things, too. So, uh, uh, and the partnership is bipartisan. We've had O'Connor has been a wonderful partner for this. We all, the three of us, Joan, Pat, and I, work so very closely. We've already been meeting with our staff. So I want to make sure that you all know that, that you will continue to be in great hands with uh, Joan and with Pat. And with that, I just wanted to thank you for the opportunity to, to serve and become a great tonight. Well, Jim, that's a lot. Thank you. I thought you were coming here to say goodbye so we could say thank you to you for all the hard work that you've done over the last 10 years. Um, I'll let Tony and, and Sean speak more about the relationship from a board perspective, but like you said, knowing, knowing you from the start 10 years ago when I was on the school committee, and I can't thank you enough for everything you've done for the situation. You've been a great partner. You know, whenever we pick up the phone and call you, we've always jumped in and, and called those folks at the state house or at the federal level um, to help us. And it is that partnership that works so well. And we'll have large shoes to fill. So we hope the folks that are coming forward understand, you know, the expectation I think that we will all have as a board with regards to the open communication and the collaborative problem solving. You really certainly have been a leader and a great, a great representative. So I thank you and it's been a pleasure. I'll let the rest of the board. Yeah, it's typical Maura. I'll let them talk and then she said that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're on the team. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jim, from the day you, you represented us, you've done a great job. I've always been proud to support you over the years. Um, you're there at every event. You're there to support every cause. You give it 100% and, and you're really um, I didn't know what to expect when you start dealing with real politicians. They don't really consider us politicians. <laughs> but you, you really support this community. It's not even half of your, of your district. Um, you know, Situate's kind of split in two pieces, and Joe has a little piece, and Jim's got a bigger piece. But you just couldn't be more dedicated to our community. And I think all the people in the crowd have wanted to at some point in time on some event and some, some issue. And uh, again, it's kind of bittersweet. I, I wish you the best of luck. I know career-wise, it's probably great for you. You do great things at a different level, but we're going to miss you here because you've done such a great job. So um, I thank you for it. I thank you for our friendship as well. And you saw it myself. I know that that helps. So we'll continue to be able to work. Thank you. They really have not left anything out yeah. there other than I can just speak firsthand outside of town hall, inside of town hall. Anytime we call, I called you, you called me back. And you not only just gave me a website, you really rolled up your sleeves and you did whatever you could do. I remember attending the first flood meetings. And you know, you were probably like me, yeah, we grew up in these towns, but we really didn't know the impact or what was gonna happen. And I could see you really becoming, getting really educated, listening to the Dave Balls and the Doris from- Curry, 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 Dave Balls, yes, right? um, And the same, I'm sure there were people down in Marshall that, that lived and breathed it, and you were there. I can't imagine somebody filling your shoes, spending as much time and energy as you have in this job. I really, really mean that. I can't believe you have a
family or anything else going on other than my job. And really, and, and my wife and I have both said how much time we've put into this. And uh, Mara told you some huge shoes to fill. I, mean, I, I want to thank you very, very much, really. You, 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 you treated the situation like it was the only thing. And I know you did the same in life, Jill. But we, if someone didn't know, they wouldn't know you lived. You know, you treated each and every resident of this town like they were your only family. Really, you did it. Thank you very much. The only thing I have to add is I, um, when Jim walked in, I made sure that he wasn't changing his cell phone. Yeah, I have to double check it too. It still works. So we will miss you, but we will uh, we will look forward to working with you on another level. Thank you. Can you all, it, honestly, it has been the greatest professional honor of my life. You've made it so much better just as a team with the work on So whoever, papers are open, so it's a wide open seat. Papers open until the end of April. So it's a, and we look forward to, who, whoever, whoever you see, look forward to working with us and to make sure that uh, you're set the blueprint how to, how to do the job. Well, we wish you luck. Thank you. Um, we welcome Joan. She's been a great asset so far. So, Joan, we may be calling you a little more well, you also have my cell phone, and uh, Jim's been um, not just wonderful to you, but also as the newest member of the South Shore Legislative Delegation, uh, he's probably been the strongest mentor that I've had walking into the building, um, not just how things work in the building and, and the world itself, but also the role in the community as I transitioned from, you know, being from selectman to the new role. So, He's given me a lot of good advice, a lot of good guidance. I do have his cell phone. <laughs> you all have mine now. And uh, in the interim, you know, delighted to work with Gigi and um, with Lou from Senator O'Connor's office um, to to serve the community, the whole community of Citra, not just Precinct 3. And uh, the only thing you should really know is that, uh, unlike Jim, I, I do actually sleep at night. So, you know, say between midnight and five, I might not answer. But apart from that, <laughs> no 10.30 text messages. No 10.30 text messages. Well, maybe. <laughs> Uh, and the fact that, that you know Patrick has been in city council, so we know that Lou came with his ten minutes notice. So thank, thank you so much for Lou. You're more than welcome. And, uh, and if, I do want to say one thing too when he's done. Uh, uh, sure. But, but just the, the fact that you you being breaking and that, that uh, Joan has been a selectman before, uh, knows this town super well. Uh, and a Harvard graduate, so I said she's the smartest of of, of the social delegation. But, but th thank you all for the opportunity to come. I know you have a lot of business ahead of you. And I want to thank Pat Obama for the friendship and, and Lou came with just a moment's notice to his real talking about it. Well, Senator O'Connor wasn't able to make it. He was on his way back from the State House, but I was thrilled that Jim called me to tell me about this because I do want to add that I know <coughs> Patrick, his uh, working with you, he, you know, you guys are on the opposite side, as well as with Joan. Uh, he thoroughly um, it has been very appreciative of the work that you guys have uh, accomplished together. And uh, I know he's got the utmost respect for you. And as, as everyone on the board said, these are some very big shoes to fill. His commitment, dedication, knowledge is, uh, is going to be real tough to fulfill. So I, I, I want to say it's been a pleasure working with him. Thank you. Snow in southern Worcester, Middlesex, Essex, Norfolk, and northern Plymouth counties. 
There is a winter storm watch, there is a coastal flood advisory, and there's the potential for scattered power outages along coastal communities. So uh, the storm that last week we thought was going to come tomorrow, so we moved the meeting. That we didn't think was going to come at all, uh, has decided to come back. So as of right now, it is ramping up into a uh, classic Northeaster at this point for us. So uh, we will be with FEMA tomorrow morning and then we'll sit down and start planning for the next one tomorrow. That's all I'm going to do tonight. Yeah. Any questions for Jim? Leave my rest. <laughs> um, yeah. So now we move over to the discussion and vote um, for the change in the list of liquor license change of manager for the head of the country club. Mike? Yes, thank, I have thank to recuse myself as a member. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mike Hayes representing uh, the Club. So, and with me is Joe Ferrari, the uh, new manager, who would like to come up and uh, my job is to introduce him to you, and uh, he'd be happy to answer any questions about his experience. And Thank you. Welcome. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. So tell us a little bit about yourself. I did read that you do have some extensive experience. I have been uh, managing restaurants most of my life, yes, and um, happy to be moving on to Hatterley and, and managing down there. Uh, most recently, I, I opened the cask and flag in Marshfield, so I was the opening manager there. Um, hired all the staff and trained all the staff and operated that establishment for almost five years. Uh, prior to that, I was with Beer Works, uh, running multiple locations for them, front of the house operations manager at uh, you know several of their restaurants, Boston, Hingham, Salem, Lowell. Um, you know, for about 12 years with, with them, um, and then other restaurants before that. Uh, went to actually one of the few people that went to actually got a four-year degree in hotel restaurant management and actually went into the business that I uh, that I studied for. So yeah, happy to be here. Excellent. Sounds like a uh, a good transition for you. Yeah, I think it's a great fit. You know, the, the numbers have been great and the, everything's been great so far. I don't have the documentation, I don't have it before me. Um, so um, I think I was deferred to Tony and Sean if they have any specific questions about what we have represented or anything for Joe. No, based on his uh, background, you know, a uh, restaurant like the Fours, it seats how many? Uh, oh, cast the flag, I missed yeah. it up all the time. Almost 39. Yeah. I mean, 300 four? plus, yeah. I think yeah. Uh, and, uh, that's, yeah. that. You know, that's uh, about the size of them. Most of the beer works restaurants that I was operating. So obviously, tip certified and, and uh, well versed at training uh, staff, and, and really that's what we're getting. You know, obviously a seasonal operation, getting into hiring and training right now, and, and looking forward to uh, a, a good season. Yeah, the only thing I emphasize is the fact underage drinking. You know, we're very strict with that. We've got strict guidelines, and although I don't think Hamlet's come before us. Since I've been here, but that's that maybe not the right line for there's some other ways to go. But just be very cautious of that. Yep. I don't know if you have the uh, ID and equipment in there or not. Um, no, but I'll make sure we have the books and that, that all my staff is TIP certified, which which you know has a segment of that uh, in their course. Right, and that's just fair warning that we come down hard on violators. So we'll have to see. A lot of those times, Joe, a Mike, a uh, little staff and remain in place, you'll just be the new addition. Yes, there is the several, several staff members that are staying in place, but the nature of the operation is that we hire uh, a good amount of our front of the house staff each year. And you lose, you know, you have college kids and you lose some and you gain some. And, um, so, yeah, I, ha I yes, I have uh, probably about eight to ten uh, current staff that will be returning. Okay. Any questions for the public? Okay. Thank you. Motion? Any other questions? No, no other questions. Move, move the board of selectmen approve a change of manager for Hadley Golf Club Incorporated as Joseph, uh, to Joseph Ferrari. 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 All right. Thank you. Second. Moved by Mr. Harris, second by Mr. Vignani. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Next on the agenda is the discussion and vote with regards to uh, appointing uh, some of the Citizen Housing Authority. Uh, Stephen, did you want to come? Joe? So this is similar to the action that we did last oh, year. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. Just to, uh, so just kind of an extension of the previous appointments. Okay. So this will re re require a roll call vote. I see you have here. Welcome. Um, so, Jill, hopefully it's been a good experience yeah, exactly. for you. Yeah, and I will continue. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. I think that have you. I mean, I don't have any questions for Jill because it's kind of through this probably about eight months ago. <laughs> um, but do you want to explain again why we're doing it just because of the state not getting to the. Uh, sure. Yeah, um, so the, the, the state has been toying with the uh, concept of changing uh, from one of the elected positions to having one of the positions either be appointed or elected tenant uh, representatives. So they haven't yet given guidance for that. So right now we're kind of in between that. So in the meantime, until they figure out what it is they're going to do. Um, you know, so I don't know if the appointment would be just for the next year or the next year or you know, continuing up until the point that DHCD comes forth with any change in those requirements, um, so we'll leave that to uh, the board of selectmen for uh, what, you, what you think is appropriate. Oh um, no, I mean that was my question. So you, you served one year, yes, and now it's we've got to figure out what the term should be. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have any preference? I'll say as long as you Have they given any indication as to how long they'll take to? They haven't. So do we need to determine the length of the term that we're going to appoint you for? Is that what we need to do? Now? I mean, it can either be, you know, like we did before, you know, where you do, you know, in one year uh, terms, or if, you know, you can do it for, you know, up until the point that the HCD changes the regulation and, you know, the, the seat then needs to be filled by a tenant representative. Do one year. Uh, that yeah, I'll probably do one year because yeah. whenever the regulations come, would most likely take effect after the next election. So it would be mm -hmm. at the next election, uh, this year, next year, we would then elect that tenant representative. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Okay. So we need to make a motion, and then what's the process, Michelle? A roll call vote between both boards? Yes, we will do a roll call for the Housing Authority and then the select. Okay. So do we have a motion? I think we do that first, don't we, Michelle? I believe so, yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. No, you have to have a motion. No, you have to have a motion. Yeah. Move to reappoint Jill Caffrey to the vacancy on Citrus Housing Authority for a term of one year. It doesn't have to form Jill another first. Uh, do I have to? Well, yeah. how is this one? I'm just going to say for a uh, start over here. Move to reappoint Joe Caffrey to a vacant position in the City Housing Authority for a term of one year. Okay. Motion by Mr. Yanni. Second. Second by Mr. Harris. Okay, we'll do a roll call for the Situate Housing Authority members. Mr. Coulter? Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Collins? Yes. Mr. Duane? Yes. And for the Board of Selectmen, Ms. Curran? Yes. Mr. Vignani? Yes. Ms. Canfield? Yes. And Mr. Harris? Yes. All in favor? Aye. 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 All closed. There you go, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Have a great night. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Sean McCarthy, Sean, here. Next is a discussion of vote on the DW contracts. I did the budget. Out of town this evening, so Sean has stepped in. Welcome to the board. Thanks, Sean. Before you. Before you are three heavy equipment uh, bids that typically we can satisfy um, would be $45,000 a year until we get hit with a storm event like these. Um, we bring in large off-road, basically, pit equipment to clear the roadways from debris from Minot to Hummer Rock. Uh, so the three contracts before you um, this evening Take them in order of the agenda. Um, it's probably best. 
Like crows first? So earlier uh, in the fall, we reached out and put out to bid uh, all these different pieces of equipment so that we had contracts to be able to call upon them without needing a contract that was already in place. Um, so each contract that has been awarded based on the equipment that they provided uh, at the lowest rate. Um, so it's on their executive actions, the hourly rate for each piece of equipment uh, is identified. But with the storm events, <coughs> we'll be going over the $15,000 So, when you when these contracts are signed, um, do you supervise the equipment, even though they're providing it, or how do because there's no? Yep, they provide an operator, uh, and they drop off the equipment. And typically, uh, Mike Green will have people from his office overseeing. Um, sometimes the engineering department does get involved when we start placing material back on the beach, uh, cutting through easements and things like that. So that we stay where we're supposed to stay. Yeah. I can attest to Sean and Dan being out there for <laughs> <laughs> days. Sean? No, I, no, no I, I know this quite well. be expended by them. Um, but we have estimates. I mean, this is just an hourly rate. Just correct. So people know we're looking at it's yeah, 140, low 130, 160 dollars an hour for one of these big vehicles, up to 200 dollars an hour, and that includes a driver. Yes. Operator. Right. Um, right now, for example, in Humrock, Lopes is approaching 50 thousand dollars in equipment for a street from that from this past storm. Um, so the way that this looks is each of these people have different types of equipment. So for one type of truck, this person has it. For another type of vehicle, this maybe a different company. Them. Correct. Okay. Yeah. So the one that we just did, Cypro had some loaders and an excavator and a dozer. And this guy has different sizes. Different Motion? Any, question? Any other questions with regards to this one? So this is for four pieces of equipment that this person provided that weighs between 193 and 233 dollars per hour. Um, Who the board select and award the contract to provide heavy equipment rented to the town of situate to G Lopes? Motion by Ms. Vignani, second by Ms. Canfield. All in favor? Aye. 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 Love to stay, Michelle. And the last the next one, one is for uh, Tavern. <laughs> no, so if you have some top men, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven pieces of equipment, and some crews as well. What's a small crew and a large crew? Mike uses them um, for catch basin repair, um, where they'll there'll be a dump truck, a backhoe, an excavator, a laborer. They'll remove the frame, rebuild the catch basin, put it back together. They get judged by the hour for a budget like that. So this is equipment that's anywhere from $85 an hour to $70 an hour. It crews from $305 to $450 per hour. So a large crew has how many people in them? I would say four. Four. Two operators, two laborers. Does that include the vehicle or no? Uh, yes, and the equipment. Yep, all the equipment. For the, for the large crew? Yep. So that 450 is some piece of equipment and four people? Right, and probably a small 10-wheeler down the truck. He does have a separate price for that, but... 
know, he does a lot of small drainage projects in town so that he can bill on an hourly rate rather than, I guess, by piece of pipe. Any other questions? Motion. Move the contract to provide heavy equipment rental to the town of Situate to Topman and the Roses. Second. Motion by Ms. Mignani, second by Ms. Canfield. All in favor? Aye. All in favor. Michelle Sean will stay on those as well. Okay. And then, uh, very importantly, the emergency water line replacement. This is a lot for next storm. See some residents here, so sorry. Um, talk a little bit about this. Yeah, on Inner Harbor Road and Townway Extension. Um, the, the main, the water main at the Townway Extension was completely exposed uh, during the storm event and actually broke apart. Um, I think that, sorry, this is the same color. But there used to be a hydrant on top of that. Uh, gas mains wrapped around the utility pole. There's pieces of pipe here and there, um, and services that are exposed. So we immediately got some contractors out there to price it. Um, we put unit, or we kind of set, set up a bid to get unit prices on it, and then realized that a portion of the main was replaced in 2005 to 2007, the end closest to Peggy Beach parking lot. Um, when we determined that, we modified the scope of work um, for the contractors to bid on. The water department went out to uncover buried gates um, because the water main <coughs> in this portion of Peggy Beach is behind the homes. After you get past the first seven, eight homes, it goes between the houses and it ran where the old road used to go. So the newer main, we believe, is still in one piece. So they've exposed some gates along the way into the property. Halfway down the beach, um, there's a top of a hydrant sticking out. There's a, another gate there, an inline gate, so you need to manage the water, how far it flows. <coughs> As you go down a little farther, there's pieces of main laying on the beach. So the main was there, and now it's between the houses and broken in pieces. So the water department shut off the gates. One, to stop the loss of water. Um, and two, so that they could start to research how they could isolate this and put this back together. They can't isolate it, turn it back on because it was exposed to salt water. So if that went back up the pipe, even though they had shut it off at the street, we don't know what's been sitting in that pipe. So the idea right now is to isolate the newer section, flush it out through the hydrant, See if it holds pressure, that there's no leaks in it. Have it sampled and tested for bacteria. That's a 24-hour process just for the test itself. Then we can turn those first eight or nine homes on as soon as we get a clear bacteria test. And we can get these guys in to continue the, the loop on the townway extension and make that connection um, under the emergency conditions of the state or under now. Uh, but that does take a little more time than what they're trying to isolate right now. So if we approve this this evening, when can it start or tomorrow? Or what do you have to do? Down? They're already, the water department is already working on isolating, get those first nine on. Hopefully that, there isn't a problem with that pipe. And it just needs to be flushed and chlorinated and tested that it's okay. And when will they normally know that, Sean? Do you know when they the water department? I know they were turning gates on, on Friday. Um, there was a Hummer Rock leak a leak in Hummerock today that sent the crew down there. Um, but they've exposed them, they've operated the gates. Um, I don't know if they filled it and need to flush it, um, but that could be done tomorrow from my understanding. Um, the prices that we solicited, and the ink's still wet, um, were to replace the townway extension end. We removed this new, newer portion behind the inner harbor road instance. The initial price to do it all was 267. We realized that first thousand feet may not need to be done. Um, and we got a low price of 167. 
so we could issue the not to exceed 267, but I don't know if we need to spend it. Right. We won't know until we test the main and see that it holds pressure. If not, we could come back so for a change back. order so to do the other part. Right. What's it going to stop? Is it going to stop the parking lot if worst case scenario? Nope, that's new. Worst case scenario, yes. Okay. But from the parking lot, what's the ground numbers a thousand feet in? Okay. Was replaced in 2007. Behind the homes. That Behind the homes. Right. Okay. And then it cuts between them. And then continues downtown way. And right, and head towards Dickens town way. That's right. Okay. But it's in front of the houses there. Right. So we'll replace this portion by the telephone poles keep them with that utility. That doesn't seem, if anything, that gains material. So water main, we didn't want to put it back out where it was or in the road where it is because there's four or five feet of material on the road. That is removed annually for the traffic. Now we're putting it 10 feet in the ground because they have to dig through that extra five feet of material. So yeah, so we pulled it back towards the utility poles where it doesn't get cleaned up every year. If anything, it gets a little deeper, which is not right. And then we'll be meter pits at, at each of the houses as we go by. Um, they'll have to run around the front because all the water comes in from the ocean side. And now the water there will be in the backyard. We'll use that as a term to deal with the marsh side. The type of pipe would you use anything different than plastic? Like yeah, we think we're going to have better flexibility. If it does get exposed, it won't just break. We're hoping it just hangs on for a bit. Yeah, <coughs> that's what they're using. So, Sean, do those people have water now? What's the status of those homes? The first couple, the water department has just been delivering water. They haven't, that hasn't been turned on yet because they haven't had it tested to be able to turn it on and say it's. Even that section that isn't really first, yeah, they were exposing the gates on Thursday and Friday, um, and I stayed in contact with them throughout the day to make sure that they got on the gate, they turned it. No um, surprises uh, as this was on longer and longer and longer. And right. when did it get washed out? This last one or the first one? This last one? I think that would have been the, the first or, or the second. That second <laughs> or third. But I don't think anybody knew him. It's got a broken. Yeah. Yeah. It was the tank levels dropping that said there's a problem out there. Out there. Right. That's right. Where is it? So How long will it take to repair? <laughs> I think we approved it. Um, I think that the two contractors that gave us the best prices have crews available. Um, so as soon as they can get products, um, I don't know who has pipe around, but um, there's no finished paving, there's no paving, so it's put the pipe on the ground and bury it. Um, so that should move along quick. <coughs> uh, what would you say? Two weeks. Two weeks. Yeah. Two weeks. And will people get on as they go, as you hit a place where you close the gate and let people get water? Or is everybody uh... Well, the last problem is you got to put the pipe on the ground and then pressure test it and sample it. So there's a philosophy of the routes and bacteria that's just to happen. Then they close the chlorine out and then they can start put the corporation of services into each house. We won't be <coughs> able to the first nine if all goes well tomorrow. But, but they, they still have no water. water. Not until it's tested by the lab. Right, but it won't take two weeks for them no, to get water. No, no, okay. two days. Yeah. If all goes well tomorrow and they flush it, um, or, you know, seal it, see if it holds pressure. So when they come back tomorrow and open the hydrant, even though the gate shut, the water will come out. No water comes out for the leak in there somewhere. That's going to change. If not, <coughs> a sample it, send it to the lab, and Thursday they could be turning it on in the perfect world. Tomorrow's, well, tomorrow's Tuesday. So I'm sorry. Gas line is Wednesday. Still in place left. Electric's overhead. The gas line is not. The gas line is, looks like the water may have been in pieces. Yeah. I'm just, I, I just, I'm just curious. Not that we can do anything about it. There are folks behind the nod and yes and no. I just yeah. wanted if it's the water do they have still do they have no heat or uh, they not have electricity? Yeah. 
could I be helpful? Sure. Some of this? Yeah, I'm Jeff Hunt. I'm in Harbor Road. We have some neighbors here. Others are staying in communication with some of them. Would like to be here tonight, but they had to go someplace to live. Um, our homes, depending on the house, for example, we're the first home from the parking lot. There's six homes on our street. Uh, we have gas, electric, internet. We do not, obviously do not have water. Uh, I'm not sure about every other house because some of the gas meters are bent and look like they're exposed. I'm not sure if the gas is leaking or not. The gas company was there today and said that they there's nothing they can do. They just can't access down our road. So they just threw their hands up as far as testing and doing dig safe pain and everything else. They're, um, they're not really in a position to help right now uh, with any of this. Uh, according to the, the two crews that were there today from Columbia Gas. Okay. Can some of the road gets cleared? Uh, they just said there's too much material. So some of the meters are exposed. Ours is still exposed. Some of the others are exposed. Bob, your house looks like it's exposed but bent. We have electric and gas. There's no water. Okay. They, so somehow it's hard. Sometimes you walk down the beach, it's hard to tell whether it's creosote on some of the, the beams or a gas mount. You know, you just don't know. You know. So so far, do you have gas meters? Um, no, I don't You turned it off. Okay. Um, it, it, can you can see your um, it's your meter. It's your meter's it's buried. buried. Okay. So it's a little bit exposed. Yeah. So it's probably not safe to turn the gas on yeah. in your house. That aside, the water is really helpful to live. Um, from what I understand, and, and we've been getting various uh, different scenarios, and I don't mean it like that to sound disparaging. It's just, you know, the fire department's trying to hustle, the DBA's trying to hustle, the water department's trying to hustle, you got a thousand things going on. And they're trying to look at maps to see how old pipes are and everything. So, you know, some of this is understandable, but to me, I mean, for a water company, it seems to me that it's the newer part of the, so there's one main uh, hydrant in the beach parking lot. The next hydrant is at the end of our six houses next to, uh, <coughs> next to Jane's house. Then it takes a right hand, a left hand turn out to the beach, and that's what broke apart. So ours is in the road, uh, although the road now is five to six feet higher um, with, with sand. Um, I don't know what they did. They did dig a, uh, around our shutoff valve by our house. They did dig to that. So I don't know if they were able to test that. What I was unsure of and trying to understand, uh, and, and maybe you can help, Sean, mm -hmm. the hydrant, originally Kevin said they had to replace the hydrant by James, the one that is at the uh, right-hand turn. I don't know if that still needs replacing or not. Do you, you, you know for sure? No, but they'll use that to be able to fill the other line and flush it. Well, to fill, that would be the end line, end of the line, correct? Yes. Okay, so to me it's just like two things have to be done. They have to test whether a gate there, a cap or gate, will hold pressure so we can get service. Because if the other house is the other end, they're not residents full year. Okay, so we gotta get pressure. Then we do the, and that will also test to make sure there's no breaks in any of the individual uh, water services to the homes. Correct? Or do you have to do you have to expose the service itself? Correct, because they shut the service shut off off so that they can test the main and chlorinate the main. Right. But, but do you have to test the individual home services? No. Okay. But we don't want the water to run up. That's yeah. why they shut them off. But they didn't shut off at the houses. You shut it off. Yes. Uh, shut off at the street. At the street. Way up by as you enter into. And that shut the main off. Up by the sewer pump house. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that shut the main off. So if we do a cap there or a gate, turn it back on, test the pressure, test the water, we can we can get on with life at our at our homes. Correct. And that's what we've been waiting and hoping to have happen, rather than originally it was turned into a big project, which was to continue it down behind the homes on, uh, on Townley Extension, which is, it can be done in two stages, with you know taking care of people who are living and take care of everybody else at your, not your leisure, but yep. before they come back from summer. That's how we're pursuing it. Okay, but, yeah. but I, so 
you have a contractor that can start and we can shut, we can cap that and get going with life then? Well, a lot of departments will move even faster and operate this gate or open that hydrant, turn the water main on, flush that main. Only that main by the first seven. We okay. five, six houses. Okay. We also need to not, we need to coordinate too because we've got to clear that road too because if there is a problem with any of the services, we need to let the gas company get in there too. Right. I'm going to put a call into them to see what is going on. Well, two, just two, I two gangs are out there today and maybe they can give you what yep. their evaluation is. Sure. Is that, so that's, right, that's the, the intent for liven up this first thousand feet. Right. Get you guys back up and running, and then bring this contractor in and parts and pieces and complete the other end. Do you, need, do you need the contractor's equipment to access the gate, or do you have enough equipment for you, uh, to do it? Yeah, no. The DP, the, the water department did that last week. Okay. Thursday, Friday, they were looking for these to be able to make this decision. If these didn't exist, we wouldn't be able to do right, what we were trying to do. The water department told me today they still need to do more testing. They're hoping to get to testing. It. Bacteria testing, pressure testing. This was all looking for. But they can't operation. do that until we turn the water back on to that. Correct. So, okay. But so they wanted to be sure they knew where these were and they worked before okay. they went to turn that water back on. Right. They have control of this system. Okay. Yeah. So the plan is to turn the water back on tomorrow to do the testing. And if all is clear, they can turn the water on to the residents' homes by Correct. Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday? What is I guess they would coordinate okay. tomorrow. Okay. I just want to set proper expectations for the residents. I think it, so. it takes 24 hours for the test as well as the right. chlorine sitting in the pipe for 24 hours test. So we're talking two days, Thursday. Thursday. Is there anybody on the sticker? Oh. I think it's a it's a bacteria testing. It, that's how long it takes for the test to. Are the houses past where the where the pipe goes to the left? Are they all seasonal people? There's anyone living there? Or is, there, or is this group of houses just the only one? Who, who so so where it's behind the house are residents. Where it goes out to the beach, those are seasonal. Okay. So if we get this one section working, yeah. everyone that's in a home there will have the, the only thing I'm not sure of, like Sean, and maybe you do or do not know the answer to this is at the at that right hand turn, is there it's more to your question about can this happen right away, is there a gate that you feel will hold the pressure versus a continual line? And you think there is? Yeah. Okay. And like I say. 2005, they put them, and they operated them prior, exposed them, and put the wrenches on them, and okay. they didn't have a problem turning them, so okay. it seemed to be operational. Great. Yeah. Great. Any other questions? Okay. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Board, any additional questions? The only question I have is this contract goes, does that go into the FEMA and NEMA conversation phase? Just for clarification, the money that you're talking about is actually for the uh, town extension. To do what you're talking about for us is in the $167,000. That's all within kind of a Correct. water department operating budget in UBW? Correct. Yeah. Which we can still. But we'll still put it yeah. in for fee reimbursement because it was caused by a storm event. Yeah. yeah. So, okay. But the extra 100000 is if something was wrong in that area, right? When we open that. So if the valve doesn't hold, if there's something wrong with that pipe, right. you'll have the money available to fix that section. Who's the yeah. contractor showing? Uh, see not the ones who just did, uh, again, the road who were just in town. Okay. It sounds like you've got it under control. Yeah. Happening quickly. Yeah. We've not cooking up for them. No, I understand. Yeah, when you don't have water, it's interesting. And um, just to look at Jim, Jim, the, uh, the water department, is this is their priority, right? Yeah, the only thing that took them off today was an active one leak on the Hummer that we'll help out was fix that and they came back. Okay. Yeah. So where's there a live hydrant? What's the nearest live hydrant to the The parking lot. The fire department knows. Yes. Sure. Sure. That's the trip. That's not live though. We don't have any more, uh, fire protection right now. That one? I don't think there's any, so anything live near us. 
Yeah. There is the top of the, by the pump station. Is there one there? Um, there's a gate there, but I don't think there's. I don't know where the nearest hydrant is. Not anywhere near our homes. It, it was shut off May 7th, uh, March 7th. Can you make sure that everyone in this building knows where the nearest one is? Mm -hmm. all right, that's all right that you don't know. It's, but as long as I don't know. Well, it cannot get into our house anyway because it's, it's not cleared up to our road even so. So, I think it's crossed. So, where, where is the road in the third show? We were putting a lot of it from the parking lot and to the entrance. I don't know. Does the town clear the debris from the river? Well, they, go they go up to where the they go to where the sign is typically, yeah. but they they haven't gone that they've only gone halfway. So we park in the parking lot now, and it gets a little dangerous because when it's frozen, we can walk across it. When it gets wet and the sun comes out, it gets a little treacherous to walk there through sinkholes and things. But so it's not parked up to there. Any, Quite frankly, you know, we don't mind cleaning up around our houses and everything else, but somehow we need a little help with coordination, especially to get the other utilities in to check on the gas. I mean, if God forbid there's something wrong with the water main, you can't even get, um, you know, the gas to, to paint the yellow lines right now. Yeah. Excuse so. me, we had, we had the uh, Columbia gas come out and he just threw his hands up. He said, I can't even, I can't even mark this. And I was told to come out here with crew. And the way I see it is if, if there's FEMA and NEMA money and Peggy Beach is counted into those totals, then we're looking for help to get that road cleared up. At least so we can get crew, So we can get a fire truck, get Columbia Gas, water company, you know, National Grid, everybody. I mean, it's this is something above and beyond our Ability. We still have to spend thousand dollars each home to clean up around our houses and put the sand back on, but we we're here so exposed now without services, safety services, or even the ability to mark things right now. So whatever you know, just a pass down there to get a fire engine down there and get Columbia gas down there would be helpful. So, you know, if we start if we start on cable from. Before we get to your house, mm -hmm. down to like the sixth house where those yeah. kind of spots are. That's all six feet or yeah. five feet high. So yeah. and eight. then but even there, there's half that the access half the access to about where the foot access is to the beginning of our road is still not clear either. Um, right now, equipment test equipment's gone out over the um, over the march. To get to uh, to get the James uh, uh, turn up and the uh, hydrant, um, which I, I tried it with four wheel, I couldn't do it because I thought it out and it got stopped, so I couldn't even get up that way. Sean, what's the point of that? Dr. Kevin. Yeah. All right, Kevin's back tomorrow, Jim. Okay. All right, so we'll... Again, you know, we just can't start any of the. Well, we've all seen the video. Your house, your area gets killed by the storm. Yeah. Uh, so it's got to be cleared up. So I don't know what the, I mean, there's a lot of priorities in town, obviously. But because of that, all this care, we've got to get just a couple of those. I think, you know, don't you guys agree? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, the other thing is I just want to say is that there's a thousand priorities going on, and people in town have been terrific. You know, we choose to live there. And we deal with it and the expense and everything else. But you know, the partnership works well with Kevin's crew. Um, it just uh, it just gets frustrating. So appreciate anything you do. We appreciate you saying that. So as we said, unique situation. So we'll touch base with Kevin tomorrow. Great. Thanks. Thank you very much. All right. A motion for um, emergency water line replacement. Move second board the contract to provide emergency replacements for the water main. For Inner Harbor Road and Townway Extension to C Thornton Corporation for a sum of two hundred sixty, not to exceed two hundred sixty-seven thousand dollars. Motion by Mr. Harris. Second. Second by Mr. Vignani. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
So it doesn't work. You come to your back. <laughs> Thank you, Keith Jim. Thank you. Keith Jim. Right. Okay. Yeah. So next Thanks. is uh, the operating budget. Yeah. 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 Be, yes. So welcome. Yes, good to be here. Good to be here. Uh, I will try to keep this as brief as possible. I think there are a lot more <laughs> important things going on, clearly. Um, and we've seen the amount of hours that you guys have put in every week. Um, so uh, let's start with like the paperwork in front of you. I should say this right off the bat. A lot of it has changed. Um, uh, you know, we talked a lot about a little bit about studio relocation in there, and I think just with new leadership comes new vision. And that's absolutely okay. Things just change, and we have a lot on our plates anyway. So, um, a lot of the scheduling, a lot of the planning has changed. Here's what happened. It's the mission of really of SCTV, and that is to provide all situate residents access to the latest media technology and equipment so that they can create and produce informative, entertaining, entertaining content. That that doesn't change and will not change. Um, so, with that said, I think it's important to look at STTV in three different ways, um, in three different divisions, which is exactly how I do it. So we have Channel 8, which is public, Channel 9, which is government, and Channel 22, which is uh, education. Okay, so let's start with, um, and each of these divisions have their own sort of approach to, and, and, and the way we, we try to um, we'll really just approach it. So, uh, let's start with uh, the government one, Channel 9, okay? so. Uh, this is essentially is what it is, it's government meetings, and will continue to be so. Uh, we're going to add some elements to it. Uh, we're going to talk to some of the department heads, little um, little pieces that will run in between the next channel two, just to spice it up a little bit. But overall, the majority of this will be government meetings. Um, now, we, we should close to like 12 government meetings in, and probably a dozen plus locations. The one we're in now, town hall, uh, town library, the town library community room, the town library historical room, the GRA, uh, the high school, uh, situate the uh, senior center, so we're all over the place. Now, there's no question we get complaints sometimes about the audio and visual elements within these locations. So we could potentially put all of our resources into making all these locations very high tech. Um, but in, in my opinion, that well, not even in my opinion, that the cost would be astronomical. And in my opinion, the the efforts put into that wouldn't necessarily meet the mission of SCTV, which again, is for the community, we want the community involved. So we put all our resources, or really our focus, into three locations, one we're now, EOC, Town Hall, and uh, the community room in uh, Town Library. These rooms are essentially, they're all equipped with cameras, they're not fully operational in all of them yet, but they have cameras, they have an audio system, they have a recording system, um, and, and essentially we can just walk into all these rooms and film at any moment. Um, now, the room we're in now is what I consider sort of our secret weapon. Here's why. Because eventually, we'll have the ability to go live. And that should happen within, we're hoping for like a month. Um, you never know with Comcast. Um, so, with that said, we need to think about things like the storm tomorrow. Okay? Let's think about this here for a second. Um, what situate residents do now is they tune into their local news station, 5, 7, 10, whatever it may be, to get their 15 seconds of coverage of situate. We all know that. By having a live signal here, we will be able to, and by the way, I'm assuming you guys understand what this room looks like when operations are down, and everybody's here. The fire chief, police chief, town administrator, DPW, I mean, everyone's here. So with the flip of the switch, we will be able to put any number of people in front of a camera for as long as we want to inform everybody in situ what's going on. Granted, with storms, yes, we lose power here and there. But the idea is that maybe someone will see it and pass that information so that's really our goal with the government. So that's government. Uh, <coughs> Vision number two is our educational one. Um, essentially, when I started, this really was the majority of school committee meetings. We've ramped up that content big time um, by simply communicating with the schools. We've been asking what's going on. We're, we're saying, tell us anything. Performances, music videos you have going on. Um, we've talked to teachers that have classes going on as well. 
um, and they filled us in on projects that they have, so we take those and put those on there as well. We're also talking with teachers just in general, trying to communicate with them, whether it comes to um, professional development classes, uh, things, anything that's educational going on, etc. Uh, so that's Division Two, Division Three, and this is where our real focus has been, is the public. Again, let's go back to our mission. It's to create access to all situated residents, access to the latest media technology, uh, and the education, okay? Essentially, we want SCTV to be <coughs> as a situated library. This is a resource you can go to at any time to borrow equipment, to learn, to then go out into the public and share what you learn. Okay? So, we've gotten a number of groups uh, and individuals, organizations, and businesses coming in on a regular basis to borrow equipment and going out filming things. Um, and it's gone really well. Uh, we have the Arts Association doing things. So we have people coming in just to do cooking episodes. We have uh, people filming their child's dance rehearsals. Even people just filming their dogs as they take them on a walk. You know, it's very simple. And sometimes you'll say, well, now that's the thing. So you will tune in and you will say, why am I watching someone walk their dog? Well, this is my response. First, people just like looking at animals, and look at YouTube, and look at the funny cat dog videos. They have millions and millions of views. More importantly, it is about getting people into the into SCTV to get them to use the equipment to take it out to get comfortable with it. Look, the majority of the time I go out there and I tell I say to people, I'm like, come, learn our equipment. And they're like, I don't even know how to use my TV remote. It's like, no, 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 it's, it's much easier than you think. You know, we have a variety of cameras, um, and if the majority of them are open, hit the record, go. So that's our goal there. Um, so that is where the budget really comes into this. So my background and all the jobs I've done before really come down to budgets, and, and you work with what you have, very tight budgets, right? So that's really what we've done these past six, seven months. Um, and to be totally honest, it's not working. Everything we have is really, really old. It just needs to be updated. Um, in fact, yesterday we were at the St. Patrick's Day Parade. We looked over one of our cameras on the tripod, and it was slowly tilting over because the way the tripod was going. We can fix it in editing, so that's fine. Um, really, that is what the budget comes down to. And that really just encompasses everything. Now, with that said, as an aside, I should point out, every time I go out and talk to people, groups, individuals, the inevitable question that always comes up is how can SCTV help lower the Comcast bill? Truth is, the answer is always the same. We cannot do that. Different companies. With that said, we are trying to make the SCTV experience on Comcast better. Here's how we're doing it three different ways. One, we're trying to do a channel change, if you will. Right now we're 8, 9, 22. Doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If we could be 8, 9, 10, it'd be great. We'd be 20, 21, 22, it'd be great. Um, sounds very simple, but it, it's, it works. Um, two. Have you put that request in already? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, two, we're looking at a. Um, uh, programming guide. So when you tune in, you look at any of our stations now, they're looking, it just says government programming, right? Useless. It would be great if we could tune in and it says 7 p.m. or select a meeting or 7 p.m. high school basketball game. That's the second one. Third one is uh, a uh, video on the main. So we all know everyone has a schedule. We have a show on tonight, say at 7 p.m. you want to watch. You can't, you're here. So, but if we had an on-demand feature, you could go to SCTV and see every program we have and select whatever you want to watch from everyone. So, those three things we're making happen. Those are the three things that you're making happen with? Comcast, yeah, we're working with Comcast. Right now? Yes. Oh, awesome. Did they give you a timeline on it? They did not. <laughs> so I'll just review the numbers for everyone, then I'll open up to the board. So last year, your budget was um, $126,720. And your request this year is uh, an improvement of $259,501 with the largest change in the in equipment request for capital outlays. So right. that must be addressing exactly what you just sort of raised. Yes. You don't want to upgrade the equipment. Yes. Okay. Questions? For Seth? Yeah. Looking forward to those changes. Mm -hmm. uh, so the $150,000, what? What equipment are you actually looking at? So when it, this is the, when it comes to equipment, we're looking a at cameras. I mean the, the actual equipment that will go out in the field, and then as well as technology. So really, the uh, technology I mean editing software. So we need. Ideally, what happens in the future is we have a media lab. I mean, we have a studio now, although the software there is just as out of date. What we want is to sort of have classes where people sign up, they come in, and learn everything. Um, it really does come down to the editing software. Because frankly, everybody has filming capabilities now. Well, the phones, you can just do it. And you 
can make really good stuff from there. We still want people to learn that equipment. Um, but both of those elements are really important. But is there a list of that? I didn't see it. Uh, there, no, there is not a list, and, and here's why. Uh, with the ed I'm sorry, with the editing, we know exactly what we want. The editing software we use now is not real world, so it's difficult sometimes when I'm teaching people it, and I, and I know that when they go out, maybe more so than younger people, to get jobs, what they've learned will not necessarily be what they find in the workplace. But that said, the software is close enough to what's out there now that they can get it. The TV equipment, there's not a list yet, and this is the reason. So I, I have a lot of equipment there that, that we've been using. Um, I am trying to find the most modern equipment to keep SCTV relevant while not making it too difficult to learn. I don't want a lot of switches. So I've sort of been sending out the equipment I have now to gauge how groups and individuals react to it. Can you get us a list of what you want? And it's tough for us to pass a budget with $150,000 item not knowing what it is. So, so even your best estimates in terms of cameras and software or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The one, one other thing is this is not funded through, this is funded through everyone's cable bill. Correct. So the fund, Nancy, how do we do this? The, the pay access revolving fund will be a funding source in the, in the motion of the article. How much money is in the There's um, sort of $900,000 in there. Okay. So we've got the money mm -hmm. to spend it on it. We've been talking about this for years. Um, I think it's great if we can expand the program that we've been talking about. Um, you know, just like to see a list for sort of what you want to buy. And the other and comment I had is uh, I'd love to see more high school sports on the TV. Uh, I know it's tough because the games are at night and you get someone to film it or not. But, um, but well, well, one of the things we started is something called the Citrus Phantom. So we get a lot of requests from people, parents, that say, can you come film my son's daughter's game? And, and our response is, sure, we could show up for two hours and put a camera in, that would be wonderful. Um, but a limited number of people would probably watch that. Um, what would make it more entertaining is if that individual, the parent, specifically put a the camera, went to the game themselves, filmed it, they can come whenever they want. They can film their son or daughter as much as they want, and then move the airport. Yeah, I mean, this is probably, we did it a few years ago, maybe before Bill, um, but we used to film some of the basketball games, some of the football games, and get somebody out there. And it's usually a student, you know, they have to know they said camera and people go ahead and do it. But I know that's the that's the challenge is to get someone to actually film it. But I know it gets watched by the yes. younger kids, the parents and whatever. So Absolutely. And, and there's boys, girls, you know, indoor, outdoor, so anything you do to expand that yeah. I think would be great. I can say if we had put more money into part time salaries to pay somebody to go right. do it, I think it pays for the tickets. The service we want to I can say we had a very large group of soccer moms that would come in every week and borrow a camera and they could fund the games. That's great. Now, I'm talking, well, I mean, not going to film Mr. C's soccer game, but but this is our this is our high school sports program. So, Tony, just so you know, um, I talked with Seth before. Um, Bill, can you just the, uh, uh, situate high school and uh, first half. Um, <laughs> I talked with Seth before at the uh, beginning of the year. And we have one video system now that's a pixel lot system, that's a new system um, that we'll be putting up in the gym and I'm putting in for a grant to get a second one that will go up at the um, high school field, the turf field, and it will live stream uh, all sports that are gonna be played there. So if I get the grant, we'll have one inside the gym that will capture every sport or activity that goes on in the gym. So even special town meetings can go up, live stream, and then also, um, anything that happens at the turf field. So I hope to have that uh, at the end of this year and it'll be up this summer. And any game that's inside the gym or else out on the turf field, anybody can watch online. That's great. Great, and is that, would that, a copy of that digital recording go to? <laughs> so we, we, can, we can work that up and it'll, everything goes into a library. So you can go back from any time it's installed and, and go back and check it out. And of course, there's venues, there's baseball games, yep. there's rugby exactly. matches, right. there's all kinds of things that aren't in those two venues. But exactly, you know, I think it's a, I think it's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But you're still going to need the staff to fill for it, right? Yes. Not with my yeah, system. It not, our yeah, system. Yeah. not my system. My system, it's you don't need a staff. It's a it's a tower that has four cameras in it, and it follows the ball. It's it's quite amazing. Cool. So the live stream goes to an app, not to it, it can go to an app, but it's online. Okay. 
and FHS. But we can record that. Exactly. It's recorded in um, what there'll be is that it'll be on the high school website. There'll be a link where you can get right on the watch. Cool. Uh -huh. Good luck. Thank you. Who's the grant written? I, I uh, wrote that grant for sure. So I was awarded one, um, and hopefully I get awarded the second one, which I, I feel pretty positive about. Okay. Great. Great. Sean, do you have a question? Well, I'm just going to, uh, Tony had asked the question I was going to ask, you know, where, where exactly you spend the $150,000, and, you know, it's not coming directly from, it is coming from taxpayers from the public cable bill. So I'd only ask that you spend the money on yeah. the shops. Really try to get as much as you can. Stretch those arms. I look forward to the improvements. I have like, no idea what they're just talking about, but now I do. It's <laughs> really exciting. Yes. Great. Great. Karen, anything? Yes. Thanks. Good. Oh, sorry, Mike. Thank you. Um, just as from the school committee point of view, uh, since the library reopened, uh, parents are complaining uh, that they, the school committee meetings on TV are inaudible. You cannot hear a thing. Uh, if there were micro, we asked for microphones for years and years. Got them a couple of years ago. Those are no longer available for our school committee meetings. They're at the library. They're at the library for what? Correct. So, originally, the uh, school committee had what we called a flyback. It was moved in there in preparation for the library was ready. When the library was ready for the flyback... Excuse me, are we talking I'm about sorry, the new library or the, the high school library? The new library. Okay. Okay, so, this, okay, so back in the day, the, the school committee always did meet in the library. Um, this was prior to my arrival. It was shot with one camera. Then, when we started building the new library, a new system was purchased with multiple microphones and multiple cameras. That, before the library was ready, the new library was ready, was given, was put in the high school library to film the meetings there. In the new library, when it was ready, the equipment that was in the high school library then went to the new library. So we went back to the old way that the school committee meetings were filmed in the past. Unfortunately, in the process, people got used to the new way with this multiple uh, setup that was in there. Well, can't yeah. we just use some of these funds to put it back to the, work, the way it was? Yeah, let me, I talked to Ron about this when I talked to Cable TV about this. The schools are still kind of deciding whether they're gonna have their meeting. Right. So we're not gonna do anything until they decide this is where we're going to have our meeting. Then we'll get the equipment necessary to do a good job taping and filming it. So they may have to the between the auditorium and the cafeteria. Working with Ron, we've looked at different locations. The high school library does not work. It's too much in use. We need to set something up and the students in there doesn't work. So we went around to different locations. The last location was the Gates cafeteria. Um, and I believe that there have been some issues trying to get in there. That, that we have set that up to be there because there's a mic system already in place. You just need the cameras there, which you can easily do. Um, but every time we've tried to be there, we hit a little wall, whether it's an exercise class or something. Is there some sort of inexpensive mic system that they could get to figure well, out? Well, what it should be pointed at, at um, <clears throat> I'm sure. If it's just silly to film a meeting if you can't do it. That's very true. You're unwatchable. Yes. Which, again, goes back to the idea of, of course we could. Yeah. And I know long term, I'm just saying short term, if we can get some, even if they have to hold, even if it's a mic from the select, so we have to hold them, something. Right. That they just keep them. Okay. Sean. Sure. One more thing. Bill, Mike, can we do this? What, what Bill's talking about in the auditorium about that? Is that with Mike, I, I should know like you, but it's not. Bill, can you that type that of that that, that, no, that's a that's a great question. Um, I have to talk to the person that uh, sold that's selling the equipment. I'd have to talk to her because I did think of that. Um, I'm sure. But I'm not sure if that would work in the dark because the, the camera system that I'm talking about is for like live fields. Like you, you'd be able. We have JV and freshman volleyball games going on at the same time. You can watch both games at the same time on TV. So, um, and, and then it'll zoom in when it's a single game. 
So I'm not sure I'd have to check with her. Could you? Or that, I would definitely could. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Can you have a question? Sorry. 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 Gary Myerson, um, just a suggestion with the mics. You could take three or four cell phones. There's a, an app, I forget the name of it, but I can tell you what it is. It syncs the cell phones, mm -hmm. and then you can sync that to a laptop. And you can have a temporary mic system. And actually, quality, if it's a decent cell phone, is really, really good. And it's, it's temporary. Right. It would, it would require a little bit more, so we don't record necessarily on a laptop. Um, no, yeah. no, but it's just a thought. It's yes, a, yes. It's a, it's a cheap, it's yeah. a cheap way yeah. to do it. You get it. It's, yeah, we need to hear them. Before the, the microphones that were most recently used at school communities uh, were there, we used to have a set of microphones for uh, numerous people. They were small, they looked like little black mouse traps on the table. I don't know if you remember those. And I've asked if those are still in circulation, but uh, haven't heard back. Set to find something. Yeah. That's just, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Okay. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Anne Marie, Fats, how are you? I'm great. Thank you. How are you? Great. 561. Quite the agenda, as usual. Yeah. <laughs> we try to move it along. Sounds great. Um, <laughs> so I can just give a brief overview for everyone and people who may be watching. Um, this is my first time going before the board with a budget request. Um, so feel free to. Uh, of your questions, um, but that's, that's maybe we should clarify that the reason why it's the first time is because of the grant. That's the grant, that's right. So, um, Citrus Facts Coalition, um, of which I'm co-chair with Greg Ranieri from Citrus Public Schools, is a community-based prevention coalition, and it started in 2011-2012 school year through a real grassroots effort, um, real response from the community, um, concerns by myself and others who were really concerned about the overdose losses in our community. Um, so we came to the selectmen and had open meetings and really gathered community support to do something in situ. And we worked with no funds and all volunteers for two years and at the same time began to look to, for grant opportunities. So we looked around the state and found what other people were doing in a really great model with the Drug Free Communities Grant. Um, Greg and I wrote that grant in the second year of Situate Backs and we were awarded it. Um, and in order to do that, we had to go to the town, come to you guys and the town administrator and say we weren't a nonprofit organization and said we'd be the fiscal agent and of course thank you everyone said yes and we've had really endless support since day one um, and I'm really grateful um, to the town for supporting this effort um, we couldn't have done it without all that support um, the grant requires a full community engagement all the sectors of the community so it's not the police or the schools or the parents or the clergy leaders saying what to do it's all of us together and that's really the beautiful part about our work and, and my job is going to bring the people together I, I really do love it um, and what a wonderful community to engage um, the situate. So we've had great success. We got that grant, as I mentioned, right away, and we're now in our fifth year of a five-year grant cycle. It will end at the end of September, the funding. It is a $600,000 grant, $125,000 a year, which besides showing we have the whole community involved, we have to show that we have a dollar-for-dollar -dollar match. Um, so it's really a $250,000 effort. Um, that dollar-for-dollar -dollar match comes from in-kind donations from many town employees uh, and many community members and stakeholders from outside the town, like Jim Cantwell and Social Hospital and treatment providers. So it's really cool, the model, um, but we are winding down, um, and that's why I'm before you guys with a proposed town budget. At the same time, um, it is grant writing month, and we are writing for the opportunity for a second round of funding from the federal government. Um, at most, our community can receive 10 years total. Um, so I'm due on March 29th is a um, pretty major undertaking to rewrite our story and action plan with lots of impressive data um, to get that money again beginning September 30th, hopefully. So fingers crossed. I'll let everyone know. And uh, James will know when that goes in. He'll be signing on the dotted line with me this time um, when we submit those documents later this month. Is that for the same amount? Anyway? It's for the same amount. And what the government asks you to do is demonstrate over time that you are um, pointing towards sustainability, that you are becoming independent because they're not going to, it's 10 years max. Many people only get five, to be honest. It's about a 50-50 shot um, to get the round two. It's a whole new round of competition, so it's not based on your previous success, unfortunately. Um, but we do have a compelling case. It's a similar 
approach to writing the story, um, so I feel pretty good about it. Um, but you want to demonstrate that you are working towards um, becoming independent, and we can we can tell that story. And the fact that I have a proposed um, town budget is, is part of that. Um, so that, that looks fares really well for us. Not every community says yes to that investment. So again, I'm, I'm very grateful. Um, so that's why we're here. Um, what the numbers that you guys have in your packets represent about 75% of a full year because the fiscal year. Okay. All right, so. Again, you know, we just can't start any of the what appears around our house. Your house, your area gets filled by the storm. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's got to be cleared up. So I, I don't know what the, I mean, there's a lot of priorities in town, obviously, but because of the whole this year, we've got to get just a couple of ways. I think, you know, don't you guys agree? Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, the other thing is I just want to say is that there's a thousand priorities going on and people in town have been terrific. You know, we choose to live there and we deal with it and the expense and everything else. But, you know, the partnership works well with Kevin's crew. Um, it's just, uh, it just gets frustrating. So appreciate anything you do. We appreciate you saying that. So, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right, a motion for um, emergency water line replacement? Moving to second, contract to provide emergency replacements on the water main or Inner Harbor Road and Townway Extension to C. Thornton Corporation for a sum of two hundred sixty, not to exceed $267,000. Motion by Mr. Harris. Second. Second by Mr. Vignani. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. Good luck. 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 Good luck.
and in my opinion, the, the efforts put into that wouldn't necessarily meet the mission of SCTV, which again, is for the community, we want the community involved. So we put all our resources, or really our focus, into three locations, one we're now, EOC, Town Hall, and uh, the community rooms in the uh, Town Library. These rooms are essentially, they're all equipped with cameras, they're not fully operational in all of them yet, but they have cameras, they have an audio system, they have a recording system, um, and, and essentially we can just walk into all these rooms and film at any moment. Um, now, the room we're in now is what I consider sort of our secret weapon. Here's why. Because eventually, we'll have the ability to go live. And that should happen within, we're hoping for like a month. Um, you never know with Comcast. Um, so, with that said, we need to think about things like the storm tomorrow, okay? Let's think about this here for a second. Uh, what Situate residents do now is they tune into their local news station, five, seven, 10, whatever it may be, to get their 15 seconds of coverage of Situate. We all know that. By having a live signal here, we will be able to, and by the way, I'm assuming you guys understand what this room looks like when operations are down, and everybody's here. It's a fire chief, police chief, town administrator, DPW, I mean, everyone's here. So with the flip of the switch, we will be able to put any number of people in front of a camera for as long as we want to inform everybody in situ what's going on. Granted, with storms, yes, we lose power here and there. But the idea is that maybe someone will see it and pass that information on. So that's really our goal with the government. So that's go, uh, <coughs> division number two is our educational one. Um, essentially, when I started, this really was the majority of school committee meetings. We've ramped up that content big time um, by simply communicating with the schools. So we've been asking what's going on. We're, we're saying, tell us anything, performances, music videos you have going on. Um, we've talked to the teachers that have classes going on as well. Um, and they filled us in on projects that they have. So we take those, we put those on there as well. We're also talking with teachers just in general, trying to communicate with them, whether it comes to um, professional development classes, uh, things, anything that's educational going on, et cetera. Uh, so that's division two, division three, and this is where our real focus has been, is the public. Again, let's go back to our mission. It's to grant access to all situated residents, access to the latest media technology, uh, and education, okay? Essentially, we want SCTV to be <coughs> as a situated library. This is a resource you can go to at any time to borrow equipment, to learn, to then go out into the public and share what you learn. Okay? So we've gotten a number of groups uh, and individuals, organizations, and businesses coming in on a regular basis to borrow equipment and going out and filming things. Um, and it's gone really well. Uh, we have the Arts Association doing things. So we have people coming in just to do cooking episodes. We have uh, people filming their child's dance rehearsals. Even people just filming their dogs as they take them on a walk. You know, it's very simple. And sometimes you'll well, now that's the thing. So you will tune in and you will say, "Why am I watching someone walk their dog?" Well, this is my response. First, people just like looking at animals. Look at YouTube. Look at the funny cat dog videos. They have millions and millions of views. More importantly, it is about getting people into the into SCTV to get them to use the equipment to take it out to get comfortable. With it. But the majority of the time, I go out there and I tell, I say to people, "I'm like, come." learn our equipment, and they're like, I don't even know how to use my TV remote. It's like, no, 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 it's, it's much easier than you think. You know, we have a variety of cameras, um, and if the majority of them are open to hit the record, go. So that's our goal there. Um, so that is where the budget really comes into this. So my background and all the jobs I've been before really come down to budgets, and, and you work with what you have, very tight budgets, right? So that's really what we've done these past six, seven months. Um, and to be totally honest, it's not working. Everything that we have is really, really old. It just needs to be updated. Um, in fact, yesterday when we were at the St. Patrick's Day Parade, we looked over one of our cameras on the tripod and it was slowly tilting over because the lighting of the tripod was going. We can fix it in editing, so that's fine. Um, really, that is what the budget comes down to. And that really just encompasses everything. Now, with that said, as an aside, I should point out, every time I go out and talk to people, groups, individuals, the inevitable question that always comes up is how can SCTV help lower the Comcast bill? <laughs> Truth is, the answer is always the same. We cannot do that. Different companies. With that said, we are trying to make the SCTV experience on Comcast better. Here's how we're doing it three different ways. One, we're trying to do a channel change, if you will. Right now we're 8, 9, 22. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. If we could be 8, 9, 10, it'd be great. It'd be 20, 21, 22, it'd be great. Um, sounds very simple, but it, it's, it works. Um, two. Have you put that request in already? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, two, we're looking at a um, uh, programming guide. 
So when you tune in, if you look at any of our stations now, they're looking, it just says government program, right? Useless. It would be great if we could tune in and it says 7 p.m. or select a meeting or 7 p.m. high school basketball game. That's the second one. Third one is uh, a uh, video on demand. So we all know everyone has a schedule. We have a show on tonight say at 7 p.m. you want to watch. You can't, you're here. So but if we had an on demand feature, you could go to SCTV and see every program we have and select whatever you want to watch from there. So those three things we're making happen. Those are the three things that you're making happen with Comcast. Comcast. Yeah, we're working with Comcast. Right now? Yes. Oh, awesome. So they give you a timeline on it? They do not. <laughs> so I'll just review the numbers for everyone, then I'll open up to the board. So last year, your budget was $126,720. And your request this year is a recruitment of $259,501, with the largest change in the, in the equipment request for capital outlay. So right. that must be addressing exactly what you just sort of raised. Yes. You want to upgrade the equipment. Yes. Okay. Questions? For staff? Yeah. Looking forward to those changes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, so the hundred fifty thousand dollars. What what equipment are you actually looking at? So when it, this is the, when it comes to equipment, we're looking a at cameras. I mean the, the actual equipment that will go out in the field, and then as well as technology. So really, the uh, technology I mean editing software. So we need. Ideally, what happens in the future is we have a media lab. I mean, we have a studio now, although the software there is just as out of date. What we want is to sort of have classes where people sign up, they come in, to learn everything. Um, it really does come down to the editing software because, frankly, everybody has filming capabilities now. With all the phones, you can just do it, and you can make really good stuff from there. We still want people to learn that equipment, um, but both of those elements are really appropriate. For that. But is there a list of that? I didn't see it. Uh, there, no, there is not a list, and, and here's why. Uh, with the edit, I'm sorry. With the editing, we know exactly what we want. The editing software we use now is not real world, so it's difficult sometimes when I'm teaching people it, and I, and I know that when they go out, maybe more so than younger people, to get jobs, what they've learned will not necessarily be what they find in the workplace. That said, the software is close enough to what's out there now that they can get it. The TV equipment, there's not a list yet, and this is the reason. So I, I have a lot of equipment there that, that we've been using. Um, I am trying to find the most modern equipment to keep SCTV relevant while not making it too difficult to learn. I don't want a lot of switches. So I've sort of been sending out the equipment I have now to gauge how groups and individuals react to it. Can you get us a list of what you want? And it's tough for us to pass a budget with a $150,000 item not knowing sure. what it is. So, so even your best estimates in terms of cameras and software or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But one, one other thing is this is not funded through, this is funded through everyone's cable bill. Correct. So the fund, Nancy, how do we do this? The, is, the pay access for Baldwin Fund would be a funding source in the, in the motion of the article. How much money is in the budget? There's um, just over $900,000 in it. Okay. So we've got the money mm -hmm. to spend on it. We've been talking about this for years. Um, I think it's great if we can expand the program that we've been talking about. Um, yeah, I'd just like to see a list for sure. what you want to buy. And the other the comment I had is uh, I'd love to see more high school sports on the TV. Uh, I know it's tough because the games are at night and you get someone to film it or not. But, um, but well, well, one of the things we started is something called Citric Band. So we get a lot of requests from people, parents, let's say, can come film my son's daughter's game. And, and our response is, sure, we could show up there for two hours and put a camera and that would be wonderful. Um, but a limited number of people would probably watch that. Um, what would make it more entertaining is if that individual, the parent, specifically came to the camera, went to the game themselves, filmed it, they can film whatever they want. They can film their son, their daughter, as much as they want, and then move there. So, yeah, I mean, this is probably, we did it a few years ago, maybe before Bill, um, but we used to film some of the basketball games, some of the football games, and get somebody out there. And it's usually a student, you know, they have to know use a camera and people go ahead and do it. But I know that's the that's the challenge is to get someone actually film it. But I know it gets watched by those yes. younger kids, the parents and whatever. So Absolutely. And there's boys, girls, you know, indoor, outdoor, so anything you do to expand that yeah. I think would be great. I can say even if we had to put more money into part time salaries to pay somebody to go do it, I think it pays for the tickets. 
the service we want to provide. I can say we had a very large group of soccer moms that would come in every week, and borrow a camera, and they could fund the games. That's great. Now, I'm talking, well, I mean, not going from Mr. C's soccer game, but, but this, is our, this is our high school sports program. So, Tony, just so you know, um, I talked with Seth before. Uh, Bill, can the, you just who oh, at uh, Situate High School and uh, First Ave. Um, I talked with Seth before at the uh, beginning of the year, and we have one video system now that's a pixel lot system, that's a new system um, that we'll be putting up in the gym and I'm putting in for a grant to get a second one that will go up at the um, high school field, the turf field, and it will live stream uh, all sports that are gonna be played there. So if I get the grant, we'll have one inside the gym that will capture every sport or activity that goes on in the gym. So even special town meetings can go up, live stream, and then also um, anything that happens at the turf field. So I hope to have that uh, at the end of this year, and it'll be up this summer. And any game that's inside the gym or else having the turf field, anybody can watch online. That's great. Great, and is that, would that, a copy of that digital recording go to the so we, probably pull that. we can we can work that up and it everything goes into a library so you can go back from any time it's installed and, and go back and check it out and of course there's been there's just baseball games yep. there's rugby exactly. matches yeah. there's all kinds of things that aren't in those two venues but exactly you know, i think it's a i think it's a good thing mm -hmm. think. but you're still going to need the staff to film right, right. yes not with my yeah, system not, our yeah. system. Yeah. not yeah. my system my yeah. system it's you don't need a staff. It's a it's a tower that has four cameras in it, and it follows the ball. It's it's quite amazing. So the live stream goes to an app, not the. It, it can go to an app, but it's online. Okay. NFHS. So we can record that. Exactly. It's recorded, and um, what they'll be is that it'll be on the high school website. There'll be a link where you can get right on and watch. Cool. Good luck. Thank you. Who's the grant? I, I uh, wrote that grant for sure. So I was awarded one, um, and hopefully I get awarded the second one, which I, I feel pretty positive about. Great. Great. Sean, you have a question? Well, just uh, Tony had asked the question I was going to ask, you know, where, where exactly you spend the $150,000, and, you know, it's not coming directly from, it is coming from taxpayers, but from the cable bill. So I'd only ask that you spend the money on the shots. Really kind of get as much as you can. Stretch those arms. I look forward to the improvements of my no idea what they were just talking about, but now I do it. It's pretty exciting. Yes. Great. Karen, anything? Yes. Thanks. Good. Oh, sorry. Mike? Thank you. Just as from the school committee point of view, uh, since the library reopened, uh, parents are complaining uh, that they, the school committee meetings on TV are inaudible. They cannot hear a thing. Uh, if there were micro, we asked for microphones for years and years, got them a couple years ago. Those are no longer available for our school committee meetings. They're at the library. The library for what? Correct. So originally, the uh, school committee had what we called a flyback. It was moved in there in preparation for the library was ready. When the library was ready for the flyback, excuse me, are we talking I'm about sorry, the new the, library or the, the high school library? The new library. Okay. Okay. So this. Okay. So back in the day, the, the school committee always did meet in the library. Um, this was prior to my arrival. It was shot with one camera. Then. When we started building the new library, a new system was purchased with multiple microphones and multiple cameras. That, before the library was ready, the new library was ready, was given, was put in the high school library to film the meetings there. In the new library, when it was ready, the equipment that was in the high school library then went to the new library. So we went back to the old way that the school committee meetings were filmed in the past. Unfortunately, in the process, people got used to the new way with this multiple uh, setup that was in. Well, can't we just use some of these funds to put it back some to the, work, the way it was? Yeah, let me, I talked to Ron about this, and I talked to Cable TV about this. The schools are still kind of deciding whether they have their meeting. Right. So we're not going to do anything until they decide, this is where we're going to have our meeting. 
then we'll get the equipment necessary to do a good job taping and filming it. So they yeah. may we go up the thing between the auditorium right. and the yeah. cafeteria. Working with Ron, so, we've looked at different locations of the high school library does not work. It's too much induced. We need to set something up and the students in there it doesn't work. So we looked, went around to different locations. The last location was the Gates cafeteria. Um, and I believe that there have been some issues trying to get in there. But, that, but we have set that up to be there because there's a mic system already in place. You just need the cameras there, which we can easily do. Um, but every time we've tried to be there, we hit a little wall, whether it's an exercise class or something. Is there some sort of inexpensive mic system that they could get to figure well, out? Well, what it should be pointed at, at um, <coughs> I'm sure. But it's just silly to fill a meeting if you can't do it. That's very true. You're unwatchable. Yes. Which, again, it goes back to the idea of, of course we could. Yeah. And I know long term, I'm just saying short term, if we can get some, even if they have to hold, even if it's the lights from the select so consumer, they have to hold them, something. Right. That they can speak. Okay. Sean? One more thing. Bill, Mike, can we do this? What, what Bill's talking about in the auditorium about the pack? Is that Equipped, Mike. I, I should know, like you, but it's not. Bill, can you that put that in the list? That's a that's a great question. Um, I'd only talk to the person that uh, sold that's selling the equipment. I'd have to talk to her because I did think of that. Um, I'm, sure. I'm not sure if that would work in the dark because the, the camera system that I'm talking about is for like live fields. Like you, you'd be able. We have JV and freshman volleyball games going on at the same time. You can watch both games at the same time. On TV, so um, and, and then it'll zoom in when it's a single game. So I'm not sure. I'd have to check with her. Could you? Or did, I you definitely know? could. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. Can I do a question? Sorry, one more question. Gary. Gary Myers, and um, just a suggestion with the mics. You could take three or four cell phones. There's an app. I forget the name of it, but I can tell you what it is. It syncs the cell phones. Mm -hmm. And then you can sync that to a laptop. And you can have a temporary mic system. And actually, quality, if it's a decent cell phone, is really, really good. And it's, it's temporary. Right. It would, it would require a little bit more, because we don't record necessarily on a laptop. Um, no, again, but it's just a thought. It's yes, a, it's yes. A good thought. It's, a cheap, yeah. it's a cheap way yeah. to do it. You get it. Yeah. It's, yeah, we need to hear them. Before the, the microphones that were most recently used at school community meetings uh, were there, we used to have a set of microphones for uh, numerous people. They were small, they looked like little black mouse traps on the table. I don't know if you remember those. And I've asked if those are still in circulation, but uh, haven't heard back. So um, Citra Facts Coalition, um, of which I'm co-chair with Greg Ranieri from Citra Public Schools, is a community-based prevention coalition. And it started in 2011-2012 school year through a real grassroots effort, a um, real response from the community um, concerns by myself and others who were really concerned about the overdose losses in our community. Um, so we came to the selectmen and had open meetings and really gathered community support to do something in Citra. And we worked with no funds and all volunteers for two years and at the same time began to look to, for grant opportunities. So we looked around the state and found what other people were doing and a really great model with the Drug Free Communities Grant. Um, Greg and I wrote that grant in the second year of Situate Backs and we were awarded it. Um, and in order to do that, we had to go to the town, come to you guys and the town administrator and say we weren't a nonprofit organization and say we'd be the fiscal agent and of course thank you everyone said yes and we've had really endless support since day one um, and I'm really grateful um, to the town for supporting this effort um, we couldn't have done it without all that support 
Um, the grant requires a full community engagement, all the sectors of the community, so it's not the police or the schools or the parents or the clergy leaders saying what to do, it's all of us together, and that's really the beautiful part about our work and, and my job is getting to bring the people together. I, I really do love it. Um, and what a wonderful community to engage um, the situate. So we've had great success. We got that grant, as I mentioned, right away, and we're now in our fifth year of a five-year grant cycle. It will end at the end of September, the funding. It's a $600,000 grant, $125,000 a year, which besides showing we have the whole community involved, we have to show that we have a dollar for dollar match. Um, so it's really a $250,000 effort. Um, that dollar for dollar match comes from in-kind donations from many town employees uh, and many community members and stakeholders from outside the town, like Jim Cantwell and Social Hospital and treatment providers. So it's really cool, the model, um, but we are winding down, um, and that's why I'm before you guys with a proposed town budget. At the same time, um, it is grant writing month, and we are writing for the opportunity for a second round of funding from the federal government. Um, at most, a community can receive 10 years total. Um, so I'm due on March 29th is a um, pretty major undertaking to rewrite our story and action plan with lots of impressive data um, to get that money again beginning September 30th, hopefully. So fingers crossed, I'll let everyone know. and. Uh, James will know when that goes in. He'll be signing on the dotted line with me this time um, when we submit those documents later this month. Is that for the same amount? It's for the same amount. And what the government asks you to do is demonstrate over time that you are um, pointing towards sustainability, that you are becoming independent because they're not going to, it's 10 years max. Many people only get five, to be honest. It's about a 50 50 shot um, to get the round two. It's a whole new round of competition, so it's not based on your previous success, unfortunately. Is that anyway? Um, but we do have a compelling case. It's a similar approach to writing the story, um, so I feel pretty good about it. Um, but you want to demonstrate that you are working towards um, becoming independent, and we can we can tell that story. And the fact that I have a proposed um, town budget is, is part of that. Um, so that that looks fares really well for us. Not every community says yes to that investment. So again, I'm I'm very grateful. Um, so that's why we're here. Um, what the numbers that you guys have in your packets represent about 75% of a full year because the fiscal year don't line up. Um, so we are funded through September. That's about 75%. And it's primarily um, a status uh, level set. The programming really is not cut from what we're doing already. I think we've gained some efficiencies in what we do. Um, certain things like travel and training we, we did take out because we, you know what we're doing. In fact, we're mentoring other communities and how to do it. So um, there'll be, there's a lot in Massachusetts that's available pretty locally and free. Um, so I feel confident um, that we can you know, win the training, if you will, <laughs> at no cost to the town. But everything else um, remains the same. So lots of our programming um, is around education. Um, some investments you know, have benefited depart town departments, including this year we were able to purchase the new health curriculum for pre-K through 12. We actually bought the teacher guides and the um, student materials for all grade levels with over $10,000. So we really look to spend down the grant budget. Um, a lot of what the budget is, is my salary and Barbara Quinlan's salary. Really, and what we do is coordinate pieces that are already in play, which is the, the model. Um, so there's not a lot of fluff really. Um, there's not a lot that we're allowed to spend budget money on, which has made us really focus on um, strategies and collaboration. And that's how we're going to work. Um, so we continue to do education, skills groups for parents, community education. Lots of great experts come from Boston, including next week. We have our pre-prom event, which is a neuroscientist from Children's Comes. That's Tuesday evening in the Situate Library. Hopefully the mics will be working. At 6.30 p.m. is Dr. Harris. It's really wonderful. Do you get good attendance? We do. So um, last year, one of um, Barbara Quinlan and one of our parent volunteers had the brilliant idea of putting the prom tickets for sale at the event. This is actually the eighth year we've had Dr. Harris come from Boston. Really, it's a, quite, it's a fascinating presentation. Yeah. And they said, well, let's bribe the kids, right? So we'll give them $10 off their prom ticket. And prom tickets are very expensive these days. So it was their idea to offer a $10 discount. And I rolled my eyes and I said, who is going to come for $10? And they came. Came, they did. We had raffles. Many community members, our small businesses in the community donated hair and makeup and boutonniere and tux rental, little prizes. And that's really what we do. We engage the parents to run the tables and the kids to help. And, all our events really are engaging with the community. And then we um, trick them into listening to 
the neuroscience of addiction, whatever works. Um, we had about 80 uh, juniors plus parents through the Boston Globe there last year, very well attended event. Um, and we try to, we, we are choosy about the number of um, presentations we do. Um, that's very strategic. Um, that event also opens with students who are currently juniors who present and they open the presentation with a, a review of our data. So where, where are we getting better with our substance use among students and where, what are the persistent numbers and where we need to work on? Um, so that's kind of a cool opening. We get the kids to present it. So it's a great one. Yeah, it, there's, there's so many great things. We have um, support groups in school right now for kids who are struggling um, as well. That's in the high school. And then we also have some of the contracts. And we also have a group, one at Gates and one in the high school for students or impacted by a loved one's substance use. So it could be a parent or a sibling or a family member. Um, but as I know, that's a, that's a risk factor and that um, impacts your academic success and your mental health and everything else. So I was really thrilled back at the beginning when the superintendent, former superintendent said, yes, you can run those groups during the school day. So we figured out a way that they don't miss class um, and it enables kids to participate in these groups. And the grant money and the proposed budget pays a you know, couple thousand dollars to make that happen, to bring somebody in. So lots of little things like that that might not be obvious to everyone. It's not all about events. There's lots of wonderful things going on behind the scenes, um, including a helpline um, interface referral service that's for all residents, actually, to access mental health care. All ages, it's not a school thing. Um, and uh, we have a contract for that. And that's been really remarkable. That was a Jim Cantwell deal where we did the pilot and um, Situate Force did the best job of utilizing it. So <laughs> we've, uh, we've got a nice thing going. Um, and I think answer any questions? We should do. Well, I'll just read the numbers and let folks right. go to the, the, um, the questions that right. anyone wants to ask and <coughs> thank you for. So your budget is $64,857 first mm -hmm. time mm -hmm. and it's 75%. So right. typically your budget's $125,000? Exactly, yeah. Okay. Yep. So uh, that's where we are. Uh, any questions, comments for Anne Marie? Karen, do you want to start? Um, I would just, when you're done with the grant, yeah. if you could, I would love to get an executive summary with all your data. Absolutely. The success has been remarkable, mm -hmm. and we should share that with everybody. I'd be happy to do that, yeah. Um, I would, would you like a few numbers? I jot it down. For the, just yeah. quickly. Sure. I can't help it. No. Um, because it is really impressive. And when we, um, so how, how we define, you know, determine our strategies, we update those year to year. And we um, have to use things that are known to work and peel off things that we know don't work. Um, whether the government, federal government's not going to spend money um, that, um, you know, just up to what a community's win. So we have to use science based strategies. And, um, and to, in order to demonstrate that, we collect data, anonymous survey data during health class every year. And we compare those to statewide averages and national averages. And when we got started, that which was the first year of collecting data. It was just at the high school at that time. The numbers were pretty alarming um, for youth substance use in situate. Um, or past 30, we ask, have you ever questions, which I don't discount those, but they're not my most concerning questions, sets of questions. The ones that I pay a lot of attention to are <coughs> current use. In the past 30 days, have you, did you? Um, in the past 30 days, have you used any alcohol? When we got started, started were 57% of all high school students had used alcohol, and that's now down to 39%. And um, in the past 30 days, did you binge drink alcohol, which is five or more drinks, so drinking to get drunk. When we started, we were at 42%, which is off the charts. Haven't heard another town that ever had a number like that. Um, and currently, we're at 27%. So it's a substantial reduction. Uh, it is one of the hardest numbers to change in situate alcohol use, and um, at 27%, even though it's a remarkable reduction, we're still well above the state average of 18%. And that's in Massachusetts. Yeah, it's the it's the hardest one. Uh, marijuana use was at 43%, and we're now at 25% of all high school students in the past month, one in four, which is below the state average. So we're making progress overall. Um, it's the high risk behaviors: um, binge drinking, riding in a car risk-taking behaviors and kids with multiple risk factors are really sort of the, the next frontier. So that's 2.0, that's where we're going with that. But but overall, Kevin, really great progress. And the other question I had is South Shore Pier Recovery, there's a lot of overlap, mm -hmm. and that's a totally separate. It is, totally separate. Run. That's right, <coughs> yes, that's a, a fully independent nonprofit organization that actually started by people coming to FACTS meetings. So people right. in recovery saying, hey, we want to help. <laughs> so a spin-off, if you will. Yep. We're prevention and the recovery support, but we work really closely together, particularly with the police. 
no question, it's just a comment that I'm sure I'm gonna hear you, the three of you say you agree. We have never had a person so dedicated and enthusiastic about helping individuals with families in this town. And Maria kind of saying, uh, good, what you've done. Thank you. You said $600,000 too fast. I want to hear you say it a couple more times because it wasn't for you, it wouldn't have happened. Thank you. Um, I don't know where to begin. You know, and, uh, one of those statistics that you mentioned, and uh, Me too. Keep, keep up the good work. Thank you, John. All right. Yeah, it's, a, it's an honor, really. It's such a rewarding work. I feel bad for all the other departments. Thank you so much. <laughs> I've got the best one. I really do. I love it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't have a lot of questions. I think this is probably the best sixty-four thousand dollars we'll spend. It's uh, the progress that we've made. I mean, a lot of us have been involved since yeah. the beginning, and and I think you know the board supports you with our initiatives and the way we try and policy the town. Also, awesome. um, you know, we support you. I know you feel very like one percent and keep up the good work. And if they're smart, they'll give you a grant again. That's and right. Not, we'll find, we'll find another one. one. I'm not worried about that. Honestly, I'm not. Thank you, Bert. Shelly, where do you meet in the So the open meetings, coalition right? meetings, we, yeah. we, ro we rotate them. Um, we have one scheduled for tomorrow, uh, Wednesday evening. Hopefully we won't be snowed out. That's at the town library at 6.30 p.m. Um, but Sorry, we rotate between the high school, school and the town library. I was going to say, is there any other buildings that you, you tend to find that you use a lot or, or just the library? So every mm -hmm. one of the great things we do every Sunday um, back in May of 2015 when the city police began carrying Narcan, we um, came to the town administrator, um, well, we came to police, uh, Chief Stewart first and said, you know, if we're going to um, reverse someone's overdose with Narcan, generally people get transported to the hospital, they're, you know, treated, stabilized, and they're, everyone's over 18 in this situation, so they can release themselves. So they're not necessarily referred to treatment from any hospital. Um, we're, we're working on improving things with Dr. Tracy and Jim Cantwell at South Shore, and, and things have changed. But at that time, we said, what if, during that window of opportunity, if we help people access treatment. So we worked with South Shore Peer Recovery, Situ of Acts, and the Situ of Police to develop a really a first of its kind model um, to respond immediately. So uh, we were doing the training with the Situ of Police in May 2015 at shift changes to say this is how you use Narcan, and then this is how you text Anne Marie and John Kibbett um, to get help. And it was a detective, a lieutenant detective special agent in charge, <laughs> Norton, I forget his new title, but um, Paul Norton, who said, does it have to be opiates? Um, and I looked at John, you know, I'm thinking, of course not. He said, of course not. Um, and to date, uh, you didn't respond to anything in situate. Most communities now, actually across Plymouth County now, based on the situate police follow-up model, all the police departments are doing it, but they're responding just to opioid, non-fatal overdoses. We're doing everything. So if it's a domestic related to alcohol, any kind of event, um, we are able to respond with help and, and needed access to treatment. Um, but anyway, out of that we said, well, what if somebody doesn't want to go to treatment, that, but we're talking and meeting at the home or at the hospital or Dunkin' Donuts or the tax office with a family member. It's very often a parent or a spouse or an adult child that we're meeting with to say, this is how, you know, they're not ready today, but what can we do for you? It's a really big and beautiful part of someone's motivation. Um, and we said, we need a meeting for that. So I, in my fashion, gently harassed a good treatment provider in, <laughs> on the Cape, Gosnell, to provide a family meeting to us. So since that same time, so we had to have our pieces together to say, no matter what, we can support the family and the person in trouble. Um, and we established at that time a meeting at the Situate Senior Center. So I went to Trisha, I said, we need a place, and I don't want it to be, you know, town hall or the police department, somewhere somewhat discreet. Um, I didn't necessarily want to be at a church because we want to do it on a Sunday or a Saturday when people aren't working. It's really hard to go to you know, meetings every night of the, this week. Um, so since that time, um, May 2015, we have a really amazing family support group that runs at the Senior Center. So that's the other, besides the um, space that I share, the office space the town donates, um, that's the other regular place we use and it's been amazing. We have almost 30 people participate every week in the family support meeting. I'm about three years and yeah, primarily from Citra, but not exclusively. It's open to anybody for any reason. It doesn't have to be opiates, it doesn't have to be your own adult child, but it's it's amazing. Um, it's really saved lives and, and restored families. Um, so that's been pretty awesome, um, especially prior to social peer recovery opening their space to have that. Um, yeah, I, it's just, again, every, every time we identify a need and a solution, people have been supportive and um, 
It's been great. We've had some meetings at WPA. But it's, it's been great to be able to sort of network it out everywhere, for depending on what the, the strategy is. But that's been awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Long answers. I can't help it. <laughs> Good stuff. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'll look forward to that. Okay. Thanks. Have a great night. Yeah, thank you. Bye. Okay. Um, so, school department, um, we moved because of moving the meeting to Monday night. Obviously, it sounds like they have their meeting tonight as well. So, we'll take them up at the next agenda. So, the next on the agenda is the community preservation review. Karen and Gary. How are you this evening? Good, how are you? Good. And I have um, Bill Lowett is here, and I saw more earlier, but I did see earlier. Because we actually reviewed. Hmm? No. That's a great story, by the way. Karen. Karen Fast. Yeah, yes. it's a great story. I knew her when she was a baby, so it's kind of like <laughs> um, This year we had 12 applications. We um, had two withdraw, and we approved four. Um, we tabled a number of applications, including the, the planters at Hummerock, the shade structures at Egypt and Peggotty, and the restrooms at Egypt and Hummerock. And as I mentioned before, we're, we're positive about these applications, but we still think we need the town to decide what the priority should be at which beaches. So um, we're not discouraging the applicants. We're simply saying not ready for prime time yet, at least in terms of CPC funding. Um, we did uh, vote to um, uh, do the Historical Commission histor Historical Survey and Planning Grant, the Plaques res Restoration at Lawson Common, the Civil War Books Restoration, and the one that we approved the other night was the Recreation Department and School Department High School Track and Field um, Engineering and Design Request. So. Um, if you have any questions about any of those three, we've gone over them before, so I thought, sure. In the interest of keeping. Can you just summarize the uh, the value of each of them, just so uh, folks can hear? Yes. The historic planning uh, survey and planning is ten thousand. The World War One plaques restoration is five thousand. The uh, Civil War books restoration is one thousand five hundred forty-one. The big one is the design and engineering for the high school athletic complex, and that is $418,500. Um, I don't know if you've got the warrant information, but there's a description of what it covers in the, um, the article itself. Um, you know, as, as we all know, the, the trap is in serious condition. It's, it's unsafe, um, so it can't even really be used anymore, and it's not allowed to be used for MIAA meets. Um, the uh, turf field is at the end of its useful life. Uh, the town did allocate about $450,000 last year in the capital budget for the turf replacement because as everyone knows, CPC money can't pay for artificial turf. But we can pay for the track. Um, after many meetings and a lot of patience on behalf of the applicants, um, the committee decided that we thought it wise to go ahead with design and engineering for the entire high school complex. So that would include the track, the field, the, um, the new uh, girls varsity uh, softball field, which as we all know, we have a Title IX issue there, so that has to be dealt with. Um, and then, so we're, we're asking them to engineer the whole thing so that once that is done, it brings us all the way up to uh, bid documents then we're ready to go. Uh, there's also a timing issue with when you can do construction at the high school, obviously because of you know, uh, the school being in session and sports, et cetera, et cetera. So um, if we thought it wise to do that, and once we've got the plans, then they can come back to CPC, or should the town decide there are some other financing mechanisms for fields, because clearly this is, not, this is just the beginning. Um, We've got a long way to go. Um, so that was our thought. And we also thought that if it was, we got the plans back and it looked like we, the town wanted to go ahead, 
we could go to town meeting in the fall to request the money, which would mean the money would be available the next day. If not, if it looks as though the timing is such that uh, you can't start construction until July 1, you could wait until the next fiscal year, which would mean we'd be going to town meeting in the spring. So it's really, you know, a matter of losing a Right, right. And the good news is, is once this is done, it means that we would have the design and engineering done for the girls' softball field. So we could decide to accelerate that. Um, so that's where we are in that. And when I was at that board meeting, I know, um, just Senator had some other um, commitments that night. And just to clarify, I think CPC did a nice job sort of asking the recreation department too to come up with, you know, a phase plan so we so out this design. Um, that we can clearly lay out for the taxpayers what the investment is going to be for each piece of the field. Mm -hmm. And we did, we did get some pushback at the advisory board over the issue of what if we spend this money and then the town decides not to go, to go ahead with it. Well, I think there's more risk at asking the town to, to do both design and construction money at the same town meeting than there is to break it up into two pieces. Um, and at the end of the day, no matter which, what you, way you look at it, the turf field has to be replaced. The uh, track has got to be replaced. It can't, it can't be used at this point. So, and the girls' softball field has got to go up to high school. So, no matter which way you look at it, we are going to have to spend the money. The question is going to be, where's the money going to come from? So, Doug? two questions. Yes. Restrooms, facilities. Are that, is that a part of the engineering design? No. Um, accessibility. Is that another component? Yes. Um, it includes the press box and the <laughs> the home bleachers. We didn't. Allow, <laughs> we asked them to uh, tighten up their budget, so they left off the visitor bleachers. They'll engineer for it, but you know we'll probably end up funding the visitor bleachers as well. But yeah, accessibility is very important. I would say just for the board, accessibility has got to be on both sides for not just football. But all, all the facilities, yeah. both uh, softball and baseball. The only other one I certainly is, you know what, having recre uh, recreation, but um, restrooms, I <laughs> think we need to figure that somehow. And I know we're spending a lot on it, and like, we should really factor it in. Is it, if I'm not mistaken, there's a sewer pipe that's right there. We, to, make these, to make this complete and do it right, we should have that happen. So just a consideration going forward as part of the engineering. No, that shouldn't affect the engineering budget, right? No, that's a construction so. budget right. issue. Make sure it's included. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. all. Make sure to mention that too. Thank you. Yeah. Also includes multi-purpose fields, right? Yes. Yeah, I, I was well vetted. I was at numbers of meetings. <coughs> Many. And, stuff. Yeah. And um, I'm glad that we're using that resource for it. I think, as you mentioned, it may not all be done at once, but you can, you're going to need pieces of the engineering over the next two, three, five, ten years. Um, that land isn't going to change. You know, it's, the high school, you know, everything's there. there. You've got to so, do it. Um, I can't agree more with John about the path and facility. And this isn't just for high school sports. This is for Special Olympics. This is for right. people that are doing yoga, you know, stuff out there on the weekends when you can't get into high school. It's, it's really disgusting. Um, and, um, you know, the town will just have to give them capital plans to do this. Either as one big project or as small projects as, as they need to to get get it done. I know we've already put $450,000 towards the charge, so that, that's a step in the right direction. And, um, you guys vetted it out pretty well, so I think, I think it was unanimous, wasn't it? Yes. Yeah, so. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Is this figure enough for design and engineering? We believe it is. It includes all the technical engineers and all the various experts. So. Right. And that will track, turf, and rest, not restaurants to build for. Well, it's only engineering and design, so I think it's a simple matter of saying to the engineers, make sure you cite a restroom or whatever. Make, make sure you include that in the plans. I don't think it's going to, you know, materially, can anyone help me here? It shouldn't materially increase the design and engineering. The pipe it will, it, down it, will, it, it will definitely, there are going to be two issues with restrooms. One is obviously building them so that would cost more of the construction. But the thing that we keep coming back to is 
CPC can fund a lot of projects, but we can't do ongoing maintenance. And so, to the extent that we're proposing building things that we need to know who's going to maintain them when we go to town meeting, that we've got a clearly thought out plan, and that we've got budget increases in those areas where we're adding facilities. But to, your, to that point, Karen, in the fall, it just it's like we have other water uh, <coughs> shows, other spigots around town, or fields and so forth. They just have to be drained down properly, and you know, they will not, these areas wouldn't be heated anyway. So I don't think it would be a huge expense to, you know, DP down, just to, to drain it. No, but there's there's a maintenance issue in terms of who's going to clean the restrooms, right. who's going to take care of them. We'll map all that. That's the that was one of our biggest hesitations. Believe it was the issue of restrooms at the the beaches. Who's going to maintain them? Who's going to clean them every week? You know, um, we've got a beautiful new playground. I hope there's an increase in the DPW budget to make sure that that beautiful playground stays that way. So um, you know, we've made a real effort to make sure that where there are private groups coming to us looking for uh, get projects done, that we make sure the dog park, that they're on the hook. The Friends of Situate Dog Park are on the hook for maintenance. Um, so same thing with the North Situate Pocket Park. We made sure that the North Situate Beach Association promised to take care of that pocket park if we were to invest money in it. Because we, we're also sensitive to not just dumping things on DPW and then expecting them to you know have the budget and the manpower to do things that we're that we're going to approve projects. So yeah. Karen, uh, was there any contemplation of looking at the parking as part of this design and engineering? I didn't see that in the description. So the parking stays at this. Well, it, certainly that was not part of the uh, project that was brought to us. Okay. No, I just yeah. no, that was not. It's not as big of a problem now that you have the junior high parking. Right. I, yeah. I just wonder if it was in the scope. Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah, probably quick grass over it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any other questions regarding anything else? Okay. So I know you have that, and just the rec reconciliation article. So yes. Pretty straightforward. And that would amount to, I think it's $34,000 that would be putting back into the various funds. It looks to me just on a quick, quick look that it would mostly go into undesignated because they were mostly recreation things we were cleaning up. Um, the, the one question that I'm anticipating, people want to know what happened to the Hennessy land that we agreed to buy. Uh, that was 0.292 acres. We agreed to buy it two years ago for 16,000. And it turns out that the uh, parcel had been conveyed in another transaction. So the people who applied for it don't own it, so they can't sell it to us. So you're sending that 15,000? Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> what about the Stanley Fleet restoration? Did um did more did recreate no one's here for Are you are you I can probably answer it. Who's on recreation? I'm from recreation. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, hopefully maybe answer. Um so no additional need for the Stanley Fleet restoration? We're it's trying done. five thousand eight hundred all done. It's done. It was done a year ago. Okay. We just, I'm just asking. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm sure we're not rescinding anything that's not. No, actually, we checked with each applicant to make sure, sure. that the projects were done. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Good. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? No. Okay. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks, Karen. Thanks. Thanks. Good Thanks job. You guys put a lot of time. Uh, yeah. It's worth doing. Thank you. Gary, thank you. Bill. Have a great night. Okay. Next is the capital plan review. Who's doing the capital plan? Oh. Where are they? Go ahead. <laughs> uh, the chairman just emailed us and he's not landing until 10 30, so we need to wait for him. <laughs> yeah, I think So you have a capital plan in front of you. What I'd like to do is just first to sit on those uh, three areas where the capital budget committee and the town administrator recommendations did not agree. And you have one change that they made to the capital budget committee. Um, and then we can, I can answer any questions or we can go through whatever you want to go through. So 
So we're starting at the top with Widow's Walk, uh, number 32, we're getting at the golf course. Uh, I was there late, they voted zero to four to not recommend the netting of the golf course. Uh, several concerns about that, um, most of which I think are um, fixable. One, is it on our property or not? Two, there's really, there's really no agreement when this was built. It just kind of was put up. Um, and they would like the condo association to chip in for that. They think the liability is there as opposed to us. I disagree with the liability is out. That's there. So I, I think this is something that needs to be done. So I would, I would like to have them approve the funding and then I can work on those other issues about getting the condo association to, to possibly agree to that. And fix where the property is, we would have to do some sort of easement on that property, obviously, so we can do that. Uh, that's number one. Uh, so Jim, just so we go down this, let's just, in the subtotal for total widow's walk, let's just sort of review that publicly just as the numbers. $2.2 .2 million, right? And we're doing the irrigation system and already improvements there as well to the golf facilities. Yeah, so the design engineering for improvements is, is basically, we talked about this before, we'll put a committee together to look at the clubhouse, look at the space, look at the curb appeal, uh, and try to come up with a plan as to how we can make that a little more uh, appealing, particularly the tournaments and things like that, by not expanding the footprint of the building, but maybe expanding the footprint of the clubhouse, moving some things around. The curb appeal from the parking lot is very bad. Uh, it's not to compete with other private courses. I think we have a real niche here. I think we want to improve that experience for those people who, who use that course. So that's what that $30,000 would do. We take a look at what we can do there, come back with a plan for fixing the clubhouse, fixing the parking lot, fixing the, uh, the curb appeal, if you will, uh, for that site. Uh, the Woodward Walk Irrigation System, the entire irrigation <coughs> system needs to be replaced. It's past its useful life. $2.2 million would replace the irrigation system at the golf course. And then the $40,000 for the netting. They said no. And they said they did not recommend that. That's cool. But they are 4 0 uh, approving the other two projects. Correct. Okay, cool. Correct. Any questions for Jim with regards to the golf course with the netting? John, do you have any comments about the netting? Yeah, I. Um, so there are a few observations. One is. <clears throat> Uh, the present net, I think, was put up by the golf course. Right. Whether it's on the uh, Fair, Fairway Village um, property or not, I'm not sure. It depends on what's going on with that. I can't recall. I just know that it was kind of a, a smaller net that should have been a much larger net. And I've spoken with one of the inhabitants who is trying to see whatever the net that's up there is actually going to go longer, maybe taller because despite the existing net, whether it's actually up completely or sometimes it's down, it's, it's not sufficient. Falls are, are hit all over the place. I agree with Jim. I think there is an ongoing liability there for the town. If falls are being hit, we're aware of it. Um, the other issue I think that it's something the board considers, while I, I think it's important that we partner with the association, uh, it is, I believe, a, a 40B. So there is a, a, an element there that I'm not sure what, how the costs can be this, Play or, or sure. share, but um, but I think it's important. I really do. I mean, you've played the course. I played it. Different people played it. Um, people, unfortunately, just don't necessarily use the right club sometimes, and they just try to hit it to try to make it. And when they do, they either hit over or hit left. Obviously, their, their homes there. That's that's the danger. Um, people getting hit. So I, I think it's. I think it's something that we should really do, nonetheless. Where did the figure of 40,000 come up? I, 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 I have a man left and get some mesh. I don't know if that's all that's. <laughs> that's a lot. That's a good Tony lot. That's a, the golf was developed that? Yeah, the, one of the issues was that the poles themselves were not sufficient oh, for the type right. of net that needed to no, be no, no, put no, in no. that area, so all the poles would have to be replaced, and that was a, a large proportion of the cost. So we can go back. So they don't have any telephone poles. You, yeah. you could get it with something. What? Maybe a golf ball. They're not going to go anywhere. Unless I'm missing it. I haven't been out there. But they did have someone go out. Yeah, they had someone look at it. Remember, we're paying for billing rates too, Sean, which is. I realize, but that just. That's unless they've got to really expand it left, right, and. and I mean, it's going to be taller, a little wider. I'm not much wider, but it is going to be taller. 
I think the nice you have to use is just expensive. That it's going to yeah. last. Yeah. Any questions on that from anyone? All right, Jim. Yeah. Um, I guess we'll we'll vote at the end if uh, we put any changes. Okay. Uh, just moving right along, we have the meat of the order. Uh, just to point out the board asked that we discuss the septic loan program, which we put in there. Uh, that is a program that will be administered through the Board of Health for the homeowners who, for whatever reason, have trouble getting conventional borrowings or uh, don't have equity in their homes and come through the town. We borrow from the state and lend it out to them. Uh, they get their septics repaired and then we get paid back either through a lump sum or you could add as a betterment to their house with interest and that's how we make our money back. So the fund is actually self-sustaining once <coughs> we get it up and running. Uh, we had in the past, um, we discontinued the funding and we're just reauthorizing funding for that. Uh, but again, the area of disagreement in this section uh, number 50, design engineering and bid documents for the new senior center at the gate site. That was a two to three vote. Um, two members, uh, and I'll try to state Nancy this so she can correct me, but uh, they were concerned not so much about the senior center, but that if you put anything on the gate site, you would preclude that site from being used as a school in the future. Um, and they were very concerned about that. They talked about different, uh, and Mike might be able to, to talk to it better than I can, but they talked about the possibility of going to a different model, K through two, and then three through six, uh, as opposed to, they got very into that, but the, the root of their problem was, if you put the senior center there, then you can't put a school there in the future if you have it. Um, I didn't have the vote. I have a copy of the school committee minutes uh, where they voted to declare that they had surplus for a school in August, so it's in the art care control and custody. Um, did, did the school committee member use one of the like, yes votes? Mr. Or? Gates was one of the no votes. He voted against the fund. Did it say how, you know, he represents the school committee, right? The school committee voted yeah. that the, the property is surplus. So. I think that was his personal opinion, right? And he voted in his personal opinion, right? That is a, uh, so you haven't, you haven't addressed it at the board? No. I mean, anybody that's asked me on that question, I've told them that vote has said. So that, that was, uh, Chris did not really articulate, but I can remember his opposition. <laughs> Chris voted against it, yeah, but he, he did not, the chairman did not really articulate his opposition. He just voted against it. Uh, so it was Mr. Gibbons, Mr. Gates, and Chris, the chairman, and then myself, and Mr. Whitaker voted in favor of So uh, that's how the vote went on that. The other one that they, uh, number 44, is the long-term viability for the Hadley Law Protect and Cushing Schools. That was originally $65,000, and was to be Hadley and the Cushing Schools. Uh, the Capital Budget Committee felt strongly that if we're going to look at the viability of the elementary schools, that we needed to include the Wampatuck in there. So while we continue our deliberations, Nancy got in touch with Paul uh, to find out what adding the Wampatuck in there would cost additional money. Paul looked back to us said $15,000. So the committee wanted to add the $15,000 to add the Wampatuck, and then they voted, we voted 5 nothing in favor of it uh, with adding the Wampatuck. Um, probably a good idea. We have three elementary schools. We might as well make sure we get a look at the third one while we're in there. Um, you know, really short money. If you wanted to come back later and look at the Wampatuck separately, it would cost a whole lot more. So um, the other one they disagreed with was the purchase of two automatic, automated license plate recognition units in the parking management program. Uh, those are the license plate readers that have been monitoring the cruisers. They do traffic enforcement. They do parking enforcement. They do all kinds of uh, different enforcements. The real objection to this from the capital budget committee is. Our capital budget is $25,000 in five years, is it? Um, these units are $20,000 a piece. So the capital budget committee felt they shouldn't be in the capital budget. They should be in their operating budget or someplace else because they fall below the threshold. They're only over the $25,000 uh, because we put two of them in there at $40,000. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Is 
and I recall from that conversation when this was presented that this could um, actually, if we, if, if these plate recognition units were purchased, and correct me if I'm wrong in understanding this, Jim, that um, there's a great potential for reduced personnel. Um, basically, the personnel, the, the police department will have to spend so much less time processing these sorts of things. Now it's pretty much manual, and they have to. It, it, it can be done much more efficiently. Yeah. So the the, when you check the parking, coal pop as an example. Yeah. I don't want to give away the secrets, but they have a way of um, yeah, don't tell. <laughs> telling how they check if a cow is there. But it's a manual process, and they got to get back out later and check it again. Whereas if they register the plates once, they'll be able to go back through again and be able to tell them all of the cows that they're in violation of the pocket, the pop um, saving a tremendous amount of time. Again, the law enforcement value of these running the plates just on a regular basis is tremendous. Uh, when they can help the people who are registered and assured, so I thought it was important that, that they be purchased despite the, the little bump on the capital. Uh, not that I like to drive around town, so I thought it would be easier to run my business. This is for two? This is for two, yes. I believe right now. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yes, aside from that, um, everything else was voted unanimously by the committee as recommended uh, by the town administrator with the unbelievable help of Al Banger. So the final capital proposal, Nancy, what's that number right now? So your your final number is ten million four hundred thirty-five thousand six hundred sixty. And the um, CPC recommendation is nine million three hundred sixty-seven thousand one hundred. Nine million what? Three hundred three hundred sixty-seven thousand one hundred. One hundred? Yes. Uh, questions? Tony, you want to start? Um, <laughs> go ahead. Do you want to ask my questions for me? I don't. Um, so, just some of the things that circled netting, I think we need to put that up there. Um, John, there's way too many balls over that today. Um, the, um, each of each uh, parking lot. So we're going to fund two two hundred seventy three thousand dollars from the from the speech revolve over how much time? It's in there now. It's waiting. They have two parking lots funded by their capital plan. Yeah. Um, this is they already did come on. This is Egypt and then mine. It's further down the And what is this just going to be mine? A bit. A lot of drainage. That's why it's so expensive. A lot of drainage because of its proximity to the mines. So, so we're also talking about putting a bathroom facility in there too. So we should, should keep that in mind. Yeah, we'll get a couple different couple different options for that. Okay. Um, the uh, Cunworth Cemetery, mm -hmm. one hundred and forty thousand. What is that actually? Is that is that cutting that area? So this will put in the road and put in forty eight vaults, so that you can actually have full burials. Um, what we uh, the other phase did was to put in uh, the cremation mm -hmm. garden. Mm -hmm. But this will actually put in those vaults so that the veterans who are waiting to be buried who do not want to be cremated will have some place to go. Where, where is it going? Back further to the woods? Um, I don't think they have to be um, too much more down in the woods. It's just to build in the access road. Uh -huh. It's not going up into that uh, into that baseball field. Uh, I, I'd have to get your plan okay. ready to you. I thought it was across the street, maybe too. <laughs> yeah, near the uh, no, the circle. I think that's what's all. I think it's Paul Scott. Paul Scott showed me the plan. But so, it, it, it's. I got to remember the forty-eight balls. The <laughs> Actual is, schematic. Yeah, not too much. The reality is, it's full. If you want to provide a place for yeah, no, you have to be on the Um, and then the pumper. We're replacing a pumper for five hundred thousand. And we, it, we're taking 100,000 food capital stabilization, is that what that? We put 100 in in the prior year for yes. the pumper, okay. for the pumper. And the master plan update, $100,000 for that, is that for legal work? Is it? Consultants, legal work, yeah. The, the master plan is a lot of work. Uh, so you bring consultants around the charrettes, the community meetings, all that stuff. So uh, consultants, legal, yep. It sounds hard. Uh, it's about right, it's only a couple of these, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and then the sped bands um, for are they those are new sped bands thirty thousand dollars each? Yes. They were more than one. That's what they buy. And the capital budget committee had a rather lengthy discussion about that with Mr. Gates and finally we said if you're on the school committee, you get money to buy four bands, you can buy whatever bands you want. Um, they talk about transit bands, they talk about dodge bands, they talk about full size van. And basically our response was you have money for four bands, that's what it is. You can buy however you want to buy those four bands. Okay. And then the copper removal. Um, I thought we resolved that with the, with the chemicals. We did a pilot program. That's all we did. And the pilot program is working, so now we have to build that into the actual full scale treatment. But what what are we spending five hundred thousand dollars on? The full scale. Full scale copper removal for the whole thing. We just did a pilot I program. Know, it, was chemicals. it wasn't it wasn't building a Yeah, but it wasn't a full scale treatment. Tony was just a small Oh, I know. So this is to scale it up to do the whole plant to get it all out. But it's not like an equipment. We're not buying a, a piece of equipment that it filters through. No, there's probably some equipment to apply the chemicals. I need some more details on that, but this was a, a several million dollar project before we did the pilot program. So right, right now, they don't mind me as I lean, holding my laptop in the binder that I brought. <laughs> it's a very classy look for me right now. Um, when Will discussed this with the Capital um, Planning Committee, I don't believe Jim was there at the time. They do, right now they're running the pilot, not with safety, specifically with the safety measures they require, so they're going to have to retrofit an area for the copper treatment with all the safety features that they need. Right now, since they're only doing it as a pilot, it's kind of a... Um, safety features for removing the copper or just for the... For how they, they test it and how they apply the chemicals. So right now, since they're only using it as a pilot, they just have like a, one little area. They need to set this whole thing up correctly in the in the wastewater treatment plant to do the treatment for the entire system, not just as a pilot program that they're testing in a small area with all, all the requirements. So is there like engineering or something for this? Or is not necessarily engineering. It, it's just to be able to set that up appropriately within their current space. So they're, they're only treating a very small portion of the waste stream. No, no, so no, no, so yeah, this has to be geared up, machined up to treat the entire waste stream as it goes through. Yeah, we looked at many different ways to do this with different actual filtering pieces of machinery and magnetic stuff. And, um, and this one seemed like a great solution. It no, was it's just added a lot less kind of expensive than what we thought it was going to be. Yeah. Okay, I, that just surprised me. That's so they asked Kevin how you get the copper one it gets at least a million million dollars. Okay. Those are the items that stuck up for me. The only, I just want to confirm with Nancy that the, um, so a lot of this stuff is is um, enterprise funds. Yeah. The general fund is, if I'm reading this correctly, we're only borrowing six hundred thousand dollars. Yes. Okay. And generally we have about one point two. I think is. Yeah, we've been trying to roll it back um, because we have the escrow project. We're still having finance right. out there, and we brought on some of the SRF uh, uh, grants that we've gotten have come with loans that weren't ever necessarily figured into the capital plan and we kind of wedged those into the uh, debt service. Right. So this will keep us under our prime number for our general yes. fund budget. And then the the golf course well the other two things that jump out are our water rates are already going to be jumping up and now with a two million dollar we're borrowing another one point three million dollars is um is going to impact that piece of you know it, it is worrisome with the with the water enterprise. We were able to use another article, the Maple Street standpipe, was a previously approved borrowing article, um, but they cannot bring that standpipe out of um, session right now to do the work. To do the work. So we need uh, office systems to do the work. So we need to use those funds somewhere else. So we were able to reduce the borrowing by making that um, article funding for another purpose. Yeah. And then the sewer also is the you know, those fees are going yeah, to be impacted as well. That is yeah. only $700,000, so that's not, not as big as you know. Yeah, what the process is going on the rates on both of those <coughs> So I don't see anything that's flexible. The only thing with the sewer is, you know, that copper really isn't, that copper is like 79% of the borrowers. And of course, we won't borrow it until they're actually ready to, to do that work. There's only one thing on here that you've never seen before, and I'm surprised you haven't mentioned it to me, is the column says premiums. 
Yeah, yeah, I saw that. Um, so, so the money that we get from going out to bid, mm -hmm. the premium that we get is got to be now applied to um, either, the the, either to pay down the debt for which you receive the premium or towards uh, huge capital projects that are similar for our own So that's what I chose to do with it since we have accumulated some funds from our BNA choices. That's right. So, yeah, that's what so we're rather than try to wait for when this gets in for bond and try to match the funds back up. Great. Good job, Mr. Sheep. Thank you. Sean? Um, Kevin, all different departments, and, and Nancy, all different departments are looking for trucks, pickup trucks, small thumb trucks. Just, they're kind of all over the place. Yeah. The latter one. Uh, we didn't, why can't we just get all the same ones on the state business? Some of, you know, or maybe that maybe I'm reading it wrong. We're replacing Chevys, or, or what is on the state business for smaller trucks? And are they all equipped full wheel drive with plows so they can? Yeah, they all have plows. They're all saying with plow, with plow. So everything has a plow, so they're all full wheel drive. Okay. And their backup bids came from either the Plymouth County Cooperative bid or from state contracts. So they can do they can take the state business for who outside of the shoot. Yeah, they usually do one they either they either use someone on state business, which a lot of the backup folks that you'll see in the book are from the British Chevrolet, or they can use the Plymouth County Cooperative bid, which has a vehicle bid as well. And they, they alternate alternate between them, whichever will give them the better price. Okay. And along those lines you know, six wheel dump truck for two hundred thousand dollars. I mean, can you cut us out here? Does it have sand built in? Is it all season body? That's I could do a lot with two hundred thousand dollars for a six wheel truck. I mean, you know, so the municipalities can do a lot more. It just seems like a lot. But if it's got a lot of equipment on it, like I know it has a plow on it. Yeah. And can we you know, let's try to standardize things, you know, since I've been on the phone you know, we have a Kenworth, we have a Mac. Now you're looking at an international. I know that's probably in the state business, but you know, for the mechanics, it's up there all over the place. Kind of, I know they have to have like an aluminum body or something like that, or automatic, you know, so, so it might knock some of the players out of the body. But yeah, there are also certain trucks that they can't work on that will fit. Mm -hmm. um, they put them in the garage. Kevin just explained that a certain manufacturers you have to take all the top off and you can't do that. Um, so I guess certain manufacturers. Yeah, but just, it's like a lot of truck, but Kevin yeah, gets a lot of uh, a lot of value out of those strong. You know that better than I do. He does a good job. Yeah, I think you can just see it nice. Yeah, most of you he's looking for Chevys and Dodges, I think, for the most part. Well, this is a little bigger. Dodges won't make that. Uh, these are actually much bigger, yeah. Right. Um, Sean, they, they do have uh, the specs are in there, so I don't know if you want to take a look at them. I mean, to me, it, it reads like stereo instructions. Um, it's a 14-foot mono shell design, hard box steel dump body, um, with male hot telescopic hoist, and more and more of something that means something to somebody who understands trucks. So uh, you might want to, yeah, it's not too far. It's probably about 10 pages in, um, because you and Kevin can talk truck to truck, and you and I can talk. There's a lot of words here. Doesn't mean anything to you, It means it's a truck. Really <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it probably makes a sound when it backs up that I should be aware of. What color? Anything else? No, I, I yeah. Next time can we make the print bigger on this? Put it on legal side. That's <laughs> what I was giving you. Give me. Karen? Um, just a couple of things. I mean, this is my first time going through this, and I just think it's probably worth noting to everyone, the process before it comes before us is, is amazing because every department and every committee reviews all of this be, and, and invests these considerations before they come before us and before they come before the town meeting. And I had not been part of that process, so I wanted to just mention that. And along those things, the only question I had was um, <coughs> we, um, we had a presentation before the board um, from the harbor master and the fire chief about the replacement of unit three fire pump monitor, the uh, $430,000. Mm -hmm. 
And I, uh, seeing Mr. Friedman in the room, I just wanted to see what, um, uh, if the Waterways Commission had had a chance to weigh in on that, uh, on that particular item. I mean, we talked about it a little bit. We did not vote on it. There was a lot of um, uncertainty about it. It started off as a $300,000 vote. And then the next meeting ended up being this $430,000 vote. Um, speaking for myself, not as the chairman of the Waterways Committee, but as a participant on the Waterways Committee, uh, we don't think it's been properly vetted. Um, and we're talking about Chevys and Dodges. This is not a Chevy or Dodge. It's a, a nice custom vote, two-year bill. Um, we're not sure we need it um, right now. And that's really all the Waterways Committee could say about it. It, it, it was just thrown in our laps, and next thing you know, it was 130000 and we just don't think it's been probably better. Well, and since it's a two-year bill, we think maybe in a special town meeting in, in the fall. Do you know when you'll be taking it up again? Uh, at the next meeting, but we think that's a little bit late in the process. The last meeting, we, I was not there, I couldn't go, and we had a mess, it was on vacation. Okay. So you'll meet before town meeting? I believe so. Yeah, town meeting take all night. So. All right. So, it's a Monday, right? So, that can, we could meet before. Okay. But again, we think that's late in the process, and we don't think we'll have any more information at that point because it's, um, we have to need some pictures. So. Okay. All right. Thank you. But well, we're not going to vote on the plan tonight. We're just reviewing it tonight. So we Michelle, don't we have to get this in the, in the paper? Do we have to vote a final number? Michelle? We do. Okay. It really doesn't. You vote a number for publication. Right. Okay. Oh, under the board? There's a change yes. in town meeting where it has to be yep. on the yep. yeah, board. Yeah, under the board. Okay. Discussion. So we can revise it if we need to, but we've got to vote yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. We revise the final warrant that goes to the ballot, unless the vote is, but we have to have something in the paper. Okay. I mean, if it's coming out of the Waterways Enterprise, I'd like to have some feedback from this meeting as well. Anything else, Karen? No. I think we covered everything I had questions about. Thank you. Did you no. comment? No. I'm waiting. Thank you, Madam Chair. Two things, actually. First is the, uh, probably more to you, Mike, the uh, locker rooms, the boys and girls. You know, this is forty-five thousand dollars for um, assuming the renovators, um, or is it just design? Design, design. So that's going to upgrade the girls, girls and, and boys. Upgrade the guys. I think I assume they're looking to redo it within the same locations. Or yes. Or add on to them. Okay. Yes. It's just that um, in the current oh, physical wow. yeah. uh, layout and condition, nobody wants to do. It. <laughs> I'm only asking because I know. Um, Save water though. Yeah. <laughs> Talk to um, George and her and seeing both of them. I think the girls are actually the old boys before they add on. And I just want to make sure that that's that the girls got a good really block you know, at the boys. And I'm looking at you, my son. Yeah. Generally, you need to make sure that that's done because they're awful. Um, that's good. The second question I have is actually. The forty thousand dollars for the uh, sandblast and paint the scale at the transfer station. I, I looked at the animals and I don't see them. Oh, I mean, sandblast and you know, spray paint. I assume when they they been walking with your brush and it's time three days. I think it's they've got uh, three men at least doing uh, you know just one or one or three. And so we've got like six or eight people going. I'm just curious. Seems to me like that would be a lot cheaper. Towards the end, actually. Yeah, I see it. Um, this is actually Sean McCarthy's project, so I can get you some more. Yeah, I, I mean, it. It. Yeah. I'm standing up there trying to present this at town meeting, and be like, it doesn't seem like we do our big sandblaster in the last scale. It's not like the scale's overly sensitive because trucks are going up on it, and you know. Obviously, the thing is, 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 the 
$100,000. That's $40,000. So if you go ahead, you go ahead. You take the material that they use to sandblast, and then you sandblast, you know, the paint comes off, even if it's hot lead paint, it might be hazardous. It might be. It depends on the material that you use. I know the transfer stations are old enough to have lead paint. <coughs> then the right way to paint it would be the sandblast. I mean, I don't know the square footage, so I'm not defending it, but I'm just, you know, from a little to the scene. So it could be. Just ask. I'm just figuring a question like that might be asked at town meeting. I would not understand the other one. Well, that's a good question. <laughs> Sean, where are you? Yeah. Not you, Sean. Uh, <laughs> Thanks. 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 Actually, a third of the cost. 
So it, it was moving out of the IT budget into PAM's budget anyway, because she would be controlling that. So that was um, a bonus that came out of that that we weren't expecting. Can you say that again? I was sure. So the 7000 we originally was estimated when she put in her budget at 17000 based on what we were being charged by the current vendor. Uh, but when it went out to bid, that came in about a third of the cost. So $7,000 to do what? To mail? To process the bills, yes. So she doesn't print them and fold them and stuff them in house. She will use a mailing service. So she'll send a file to them. They'll process it to mail at the lowest postage rates. And then we'll just pay the postage and then a per piece. This fee. doesn't include the postage? No. You know how much it is a piece? Um, going rate right now, I think is point. I don't know what the bulk rates are anymore. I haven't done it in a long time. Not postage to. to mm -hmm. Oh yeah, it's going. Right now we're paying about thirty cents a piece, and it's going down about um, nine cents a piece. Nine. Yeah. It's going down. It's going down significantly, and we pay our current vendor to process this for us. So we're we're already doing this. We're just going to be using a different vendor. So our, our software vendor was also the one that was mailing our bills. Okay. So just to review the numbers for the public, um, last year's budget was $380,867. Um, this year is $404,522. Any other questions for Nancy with regards to this one? And Eunice is live, right? News has been live since July of 16 um, for general ledger purchasing. Oh, I thought she had one piece that she said was coming on. Collections in January. Okay, collections will be the last piece. Okay. They're bringing up the news. So, so is that nothing else? What, 158 now? 158 tax foreclosures. Um, this also appears as part of the Financial Forecast Committee. Um, takes a look at this as well as shared costs. It is funded at the same as it has been in prior years, which is $39,000, and this budget uh, pays for the legal expenses uh, for the collection of tax titles when PM's um, good words and outreach do not uh, resolve in collection. And that's $39,000? Correct, the same as it was in the prior year. Any questions for Nancy? Does that go to free cash? Yeah, we'll close up to free cash in the ten years. That would need to be a uh, postage here. Sure. No, uh, it's um, 45. That she did have a couple of um, foreclosures, but they were vacated. Um, people were able to make the financing after foreclosures so, became final, and the, the degrees were vacated. Okay, so our next budget would be 720, which is the debt. Um, we have approximately 5.9 million, which is debt inclusion debt, and then the other 1.5 million is within the levy limit. And that's what we try to maintain is approximately 1.5 million so that we don't lose our capacity to support our debt, but also we don't bring on any more burden to the, um, the budget that we already have decided for the financial forecast committee. So what were those numbers? Because this says, this says seven. So 5.9 is for the debt exclusion debt and 1.5 is for within the levy. So the tax supported um, exempt debt, the 5.9 right there, the second line on the general fund debt. Okay. No, ours just isn't broken up like that. Oh, I'm sorry. So it's it's just principal. And, yeah, just principal and interest. It's yeah. break it down by. It's in the actual um, budget summary. Not in the actual. Um, oh, there you go. Numbers on the front page. Yeah. 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 So it's 1.2 million, right? It's 1.5, um, and then it's 5.9. Because there's also projected, projected tax supported debt. Since we haven't issued a bond, we do have some of our notes that we have to do a principal pay down on. So that $300,000 is the projected interest from the capital plan we're about to pass, or it's? No, it's authorized and non-issued debt. So the debt that we currently have on our $14 million ban, some of it's been out there long enough that we're required to make a principal pay down on it. So it's more than just the interest. In some cases, it's actually a principal of. How much of that do you think is principal? I think it's like $200,000. Yeah, because the 1.5 is high. It should be around 1.2 the other one. Right. But, but we normally would have issued a bond by now, but we haven't. We've been holding off. 
waiting to see what happens with our larger projects so that we don't over issue. So we have quite a bit out. We have $14 million being out there right now. It's larger than we had in several weeks as long as I've been here. I don't know in the past, but I would suspect it's larger than we've had in a very long time at all. Is that being bonded in the next? My expectation is to bond it in the spring of 19 for principal pay down to 20. The first bond payment is 20. And then we should know the final project cost for all three of those big projects. And um, just as an update, uh, the uh, sewer upgrade, that's our debt exclusion, that will, fiscal 19 is the last major year of that. It doesn't completely retire, but the, the last major piece of it retires. And then there's two much smaller pieces, probably like 10 to $20 uh, impacts on taxpayers that will fully retire in fiscal 21. Uh, the next to follow off will be um, the Jenkins School, and then followed by Wampatuck. Jenkins will retire in 2025, and Wampatuck retires in 31. So just so you know where it's going, and then which the rest one, of it, which one? point. I'm sorry, the sewer, 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 sewer upgrade. So, um, the fifteen million dollar upgrade back in the ninety six. The one that they in two thousand. Oh, we see that. That's good. No, that one was uh, done with the uh, general fund debt exclusion. Oh, was it? Yeah. So that does come up down on the taxpayer, and that's when we vote that article of town meeting at the six hundred sixty thousand dollars that we vote from uh, raising appropriate is for that particular debt exclusion. So when that one retires, that would be a nice chunk to to leave. And that's in 19, you said? 19 is the last big piece of that. It still has two smaller pieces, but they're uh, far less. And they'll be completely retired in 21. And then Jenkins in 25, and Wampatuck in 31. And the rest of it retires in 40. I know that seems like way out there, but hold on. This is the last big year of 19's last big year of the sewer upgrade. We'll, we'll take for the because we can get it. And the high school, is that all? That's with Jenkins, and that'll come off in 2025. So that's with Jenkins? What did they do? They did the Jenkins, and then they did the high school renovation. They were together. I don't know if they were two separate boats, um, but they were yeah, together. They were pretty far apart. Okay. You know, you'd be surprised they were the same year. And Jenkins mm -hmm. is over 15 years old. No, I know. But yeah. The high school, I thought, was two years before, like 1998. And Jenkins was like 2001, 2002, but whatever. It could have been the way they were issued. They yeah, issued they were just issued the right. Can you just remind me what the cycle of the, the ratings review? When so we have a ratings review almost every time we issue debt, especially even though when we okay. issued a ban because of the size of it, we did have a ratings review, which was back in January mm -hmm. of this year, and they upheld our AA plus rating. Okay. So it's triggered by a change. A bond would definitely trigger it. Um, if there was some type of a, a change in the economic structure of the town, say you had a major employer that left, so if you had like a mall that went out of business or you were the home site of um, Adidas and Adidas left, that might trigger a ratings um, <coughs> incident because you have to make a disclosure and you have to make a tax fair. Um, but in our case, it was the size of our note. Normally a note wouldn't necessarily trigger a ratings call, but because of the size of it, it did. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Sure. sure. Mm -hmm. oh. Is Gates part of one? Is that uh, only Well, Gates is the is not the new one, but the old way we back. Did we do some renovations on Gates at some point in the 2000s? I'm curious about what that was. We used CBC funds to do the facade and windows. Windows and cupola. Yeah, the cupola. But I think that was some CBC funds. And the fire escape was regular. Yeah. And then the only other one was when the, um, you said the uh, Wampatuck. Wampatuck was done sooner. Is that when we went on the bond? Is that what happened? Yeah, Wampatuck was a, a, this particular project was a debt exclusion for Wampatuck. Mm -hmm. It retires in 31, so it's probably issued in 11. Mm -hmm. So probably somewhere in 8 or 9. Yeah. Right. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Little trip down memory lane. Yeah, <laughs> that's where we go. Um, the next budget before you is the non-contributory pension. Um, we have one non-contributory pensioner um, that is still with us. And the difference between the fiscal 18 budget and the fiscal 19 budget is a 3% COLA on the first $14,000 of that pension. So if the 
request was for twenty-seven thousand eight hundred eighty, and what was um, recommended was twenty-seven thousand eight hundred eighty. The prior year was twenty-seven thousand four hundred and sixty. At town meeting, do we stand up and this is, this is not a separate article like it was ten years ago? No, no it's in part of the budget. Right, but t you know, some time ago, mm -hmm. one of us would stand up and we would have a separate article for an individual. Same situation. Pass it it grade, might have been. Um, there aren't that many communities that still have non-contributory ventures. For the most part, most of them have moved on to their next. But were you said it might. You don't separate out. But they were going to specific people that people knew. Right. How does it increase just on cost of living? It normally follows whatever um, the regular pensioners get. And so the maximum right now that you can get is an increase of the coal is going to three percent on the first fourteen thousand of your of your uh, pension. So even if you get a fifty thousand dollar pension, you still only get four hundred and twenty. So you get that first. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Nine eleven. Um, so the county retirement assessment. So um, we're all familiar with the county retirement. We were told it would be eight percent and then the 8% never materialized. So this year, it's a 3.1%. They've actually um, already, it's 4.4%, excuse me, and they've already told us the fiscal 20 will be at 3.1%. Um, the system is to be fully funded in 2029, which is a rollback of one extra year. They're currently funded at 61.7, so as soon as this particular liability gets funded, we'll move on to the OPEB liability, which everyone loves. Um, Within this particular budget, we have the assessment from Plymouth County, which is $4,730,000 for 2019. It was $4.5 million, um, almost $200,000 even in, in the increase. Uh, also in that budget is the OPEP funding liability that financial forecast recommends, which is 2% of the assessment. So that would be $94,611 for fiscal 19. And that would bring our OPEP trust fund to crest the million dollar mark, and with our new um, actuarial liability calculated, we'll be one million towards an 80 million dollar liability. Um, and as it's been previously um, mentioned, it is something that the rating agencies look at. We do explain to them that we do have a funding mechanism. It's 2% of our pension assessment. We're aware of it. We are ongoing as part of our budget funding it, um, and they acknowledge that, but still, we have a just barely cresting a million. So it's an ongoing battle, but we um, are very diligent in a, how we explain it to them and how we show that it's part of our normal process and budget to look at it and fund it on a regular, ongoing basis. And we do, uh, don't need to get the, the grading on this one, we do uh, prepay, or not prepay, we have an option of paying all of our uh, assessment on July 1st and saving 2% or doing it over two payments, one on July and one um, on January 1st. We opt for the pay fully in July, that saves us $91,000. So, almost covers our open liability. At some point in the past year and a half ago, Nancy, I think you did a presentation, didn't you, on the uh, OPEP liability and some of the options and things. Maybe it was three years ago. I think we should consider after town meeting to have that again and, and take a look at you know, what are some things other communities are doing aside from Wellesley. Because uh, I think they're the ones who just went on to hold operational or debt exclusion override just put $10 million in there. But I'm like, what are other communities doing? What are some options that we can maybe consider to try to build it into our budget? You know, we can try to do a little bit more. We have this, uh, a frank discussion about it when we um, adopted the trust agreement to bring our trust into compliance. Um, one of the things that hasn't been done and should be done um, when we have that discussion is go back and look at that trust agreement and say, okay, how do we want to invest these funds? Do we want to um, turn them over to the state and have them invest in as part of the trip fund? Or do we want to do our own investing on it? Um, and that, I mean, that is a, a discussion that should be had, especially now when we're reaching the million dollar mark. Those funds need to be someplace where they're not only safe, but they're also working for us. So, just like I said, when, when we're through town meeting, maybe we should take a look at it as an agenda item to go through it after you've done some preparation, some thoughts. You know. And then Jim had a lot of experience from prior to the and how he approached it. 
So our next budget is 914 contributory group insurance. We do have good news on this particular budget. When we originally put together the um, the budget and we went to financial forecast, we estimated 7.39% based on what happened in the past with Maya. Um, as previously said, this is our second fiscal 19 will be our second year with Maya as the terms of our agreement when we went to them, we get the average of whatever the group gets. So the first year was based on our claims, the second year was the average of whatever the group is they set a range. Um, and then the third year will be back, will be based on our, our claims. We'll be somewhere in our in the pre uh range, anywhere from I think this year it was like zero to seven something. So happily, they came back to us and said the average was 4.6%. So we were able to lower how much we had in the budget and financial forecast at the January meeting. Uh, we did the forecast and then allocated those funds back out through the formula, 66% to the school, and 33% uh, to the town. So that was a Do you know how much went back to the? About $144,000 overall went back. I think it was a little bit between both lines. Yeah. So is this number here the number, or is this the old number of 6 million three? The 6 million one, sorry. Sorry, so the, the, that is the old number. The new number will be 6 million 25,850. It was a nice drop. It's not only good for us, but good for all the employees as well. So there's some wiggle room in the budget. It, it did provide some um, additional flexibility, which was helpful on both sides. So, okay. so Nancy, we went from claims to average back to claims. Yeah. So first, in order to get in, they take a look at you to see the loss runs. Your loss runs. Are you attractive? Are you going to be a good match for that particular group? So um, right now we work. We have no choice. And then the second year we have to go into the average. Okay. That was just the agreement. So the first um, year they, they they take a look at you and they say, okay, this is what we're going to offer you. So our first year was 11.9 percent, I think. And then uh, second year you just get the average of whatever the group gets. And then from then forward they do individually rate all of their members. The protection that we get is you're within a range. So if you have horrific claims that would cause you to have a 20% increase based on the range of whatever it is, you can't go all the way up to that. So other people are offsetting your bad claims. The reverse is also true. Um, if you're having wonderful claims, you may not get all of it because you're going to help other people as well. So if you should have gotten zero, maybe you get a one or two. But their um, range has been very reasonable. And certainly not something that we have seen in the last couple of years with our 15% increases. Okay. Anything else? Okay. So our five last, the final budget is the federal taxes or Medicare. And this is the 1.45% employer match for the Medicare withholding. Um, this budget will only continue to rise over the years as more of our uh, exempt employees retire. So anyone that was hired before March of 1986 is not subject to withholding. And we don't have that many of those employees that are um, still actively working. And then as uh, coal was coming into play, the higher the, the, the wages as wages increase, so does the employer portion, is the employee portion of this tax. So it is a, um, it doesn't look like it's going up quite a bit budget to budget, it's about a 1.2% increase. But one of the things I was looking at when I was talking to Cam about crafting this and when we brought it to financial forecast is that sometimes this budget can run away with you, meaning that you look at the budget and you say, oh, it's about 4.5%, about 4.5% of the budget, <coughs> and all of a sudden you realize your budget's over here, but your actual is way down here because you haven't looked at it, your actual. Um, fiscal 19 is 9.2% over the fiscal 17 actual. There's only 1.2% of the fiscal 18 budget, which now you're all looking at the why she tell us all that information. <laughs> I'm just trying to explain why it doesn't look like it's going up a lot. It's because the actual that we're comparing it to didn't take a big jump, so I don't want that budget to tie up resources that it doesn't need to tie up. So we should just let it that much. Got it. Anything else for Nancy? Other than a great does the board want to take a 10 minute recess? Okay. So it is um, 8.49, we're going to take a 10 minute recess.